last half to find the new house. Seeing what people left behind in the attic. Well, saving on homeowners insurance with Geico's help was pretty fun too. Oh, it's tiny Gaza. They left a ton of stuff up here. Well, enjoy your house. Nope. No, thank you. Geico can help you save on homeowners and renters insurance. Jeremy Pena lead off the third for the Astros. They lead two nothing. They prepare the second against Aranola. All of you were fired picking a bunch of breaking pitchers when you saw them earlier this month. We're back to back heaters to start the first time in here. A wrinkle. Yeah. Mix it up a little bit and show them a different look each time. His velocity spin. Her ball all up to understand that granola in the World Series of Toronto is an incredible thing. One ball, one strike, gonna go change up. But he's always had touch, he's always had the feel for the game, he's always had the feel for throwing strikes. And as we said, look, this is a challenge. Even though Houston may not have lit up the scoreboard in the offense, they still make you work for everything. Ooh, and there's still guys in there, John, that it doesn't matter. Like a two bay and over 25 stretch. Almost a two bay. And that still strikes fear. Yeah, and they, they obviously have great numbers at home. They've won a ton of games and they're very consistent throughout their lineup. And look, been there, done that. That helps. When you've got a roster that has a core of players that have been through as much as they have, you're not going to be all thrown off by anything that comes your way. Third World Series for the guy on deck and Alvarez. You've got Altuve, Bregman, and Gurriel, who have all been there from the start. 81st postseason game for those guys since the start of 2017. Yeah. And, you know, you can pass on experience, but until you go through something, you can't flex your muscles saying we're experienced if you don't execute. When you flex your muscles, it's because you're doing the things that the other team isn't aware of or hasn't experienced yet, and you're putting them in the pressure cooker. Shot down the line to the right field corner. That's the bases for Jeremy Pena to open the third. It's a leadoff double for the rookie. Aggressive approach. He sees the ball and he tries to hit the ball. And that's why I was a little surprised again. Spin didn't come out of the hand of Noah. Tried to beat him with a fastball away. You see that flat bat and the ability to go where the pitch is thrown. Right now, he feels like he's not only not a rookie, but he's been here and played in the playoffs well beyond his years. He's showing the Astros fans what the future looks like. We're down in Alvarez, so the runner in scoring position, nobody out third, and incredible poise for Payne right away this season. He comes up and gets his chance, never looked too big at the moment. That is put in play, boom, on the move, not in time, and an infield hit for your down Alvarez. Bruce Hoskins says, hang on, take a look at that, they will. Yeah, another incredibly bad luck for Nola. Hit off the end of the bat. That's what happens, though. Put it play. Good things happen. Good chance to see this replay. And here comes the throw. The foot's up in the air. And I think they're going to win that one. I'm, I'm scorekeeper with Penn. I, 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 no, you can't have this. I held off from, from not putting this down. You can put it down. Five to three? Yep. But that's a pretty good 5-3, too, for Alec Bowman. Great 5-3. I know Jordan doesn't run great, but he doesn't, he's not slow, either. The defense, of course. The biggest sweet spot for the Phillies. Bowman's had his issues this season. This has gotten better as this year has gone on. Bowman with a good play there. We get this first down to the third inning. See that foot goes down just before and it makes that sound where it's a tough call for first base umpire. 
Here's his own two. Is versus well, he's hitting below 150 with runners on base. Here's one, two. And the third for ball two. Top third of the strike zone. Everything, so if everything's a quadrant, the top three is one, two, three, and then you keep going. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, those are nine boxes in the strike zone. One, two, three. The top is where he has struggled average-wise. The middle, forget about it. You don't want to live there because he's dominated. When he gets on this 2-2, two -two, he runs aboard here in the third. All the throws, and Tucker breaks his back on a flare down the Ties him up, and then the barrel of the bat just keeps going. And I don't think Nola saw it at all. Or if he did, he played it off. Because he was looking at that foul ball to see if he was going to get some, somebody to catch it. That thing snapped right in half like a stick. Yeah, he's not even looking. That would have been dangerous right there. So a little piece of lumber for Kyle Tucker. Double from Payne, he's at third. And he walked. Kyle Tucker got the Astros on the board with a homer. On his 2-2, takes ball three, and he's looking for, you know, pitchers are creatures of habit, but they also have memories, and he took that change up for a home run, and almost looks like he's taking it out of his repertoire, right? The ability to make that pitch, you got to go right back to it if you're going to make that pitch against a guy who hits a home run. Usually when they hit a home run on a fastball, very next to that, you go, I ain't afraid, here's a fastball to show it. But he hasn't thrown that change up, and he got to 0-2, now 3-2, and really didn't go back upstairs with that fastball, other than the one that he broke the bat on. The payoff. High drive right center field. Castellanos back at the wall. Kyle Tucker winning game one.
Now, what the Phillies have been good at all four seasons is after a big inning, they seem to find a way to respond, and they have the top of the lineup coming up against Verlander, who's got a nice break in this inning so far, and usually when you have a break, you get rewarded, they did, a three-run spot. Gary else continued his breakout postseason with a base hit, first pitch that he saw his first time off. He's 38 years old, and for a lot of the regular season, he looked at it. Hit only 240, and just the home runs. But he's hitting close to 400 in the postseason. He is from 22nd, Segura's got it. Gurriel is out number two. So here's the breaking balls at 0-2. All right, it reset him a little bit. They weren't close enough. He didn't, he didn't swing another one. A fastball away, but then he gets another breaking ball that he takes, and then center cut. Fastball, perfect swing, short to the ball. And I mean, this one crushed. Something extra pretty, a left-handed swing. Kyle Tucker just became the first Astro with a multi-homer game in the World Series. It's a strikeout in the Well, they got numbers for everything, right? Astro score five or more. That's 65 and four, so pretty good. Pitching staff as deep as any will ever shoot. When you talked about game one and we talked about Verlander and kind of the lack of success in the World Series, there was probably no more important detail for the Houston Astros to actually get out in front in this game. They are favored, kind of the pressure on them. And they just set a statement so far that, all right, they haven't lost. We're going to start out, we're going to flex our muscles and see how Philly responds because Philly has responded every chance they have been given in this postseason. That's why they're here. Game one of the World Series goes on to win most of the time. 22 of the last 27 game one winners have won the whole thing. Granted is short, step circles around it. That's that for the Astros in the third. Back to back innings though with Kyle Tucker and Gunn. This time a three run shot. And it's up the Astros in game one. Oh, 
Jackson was uh, for his investment. Yes, we do. This is season seven six. Trust him, seven. Brand new year, same old hope. This is our year. Nah, this is our year. What's happening next is happening now. And this game is going to be anybody. It seems like places are giving you less and less food these days. Yeah. That's why I'm going to call shrinkflation. Oh, shrinkflation is just another word for robbery. But this is shackflation. Good blood. Dang, that's huge. Extra pepperoni, extra tea on that thing. A couple home runs for Kyle Tucker and a 5 nothing lead for the Astros as we go to the fourth inning. We got five runs from the offense. They've gotten three perfect innings from Justin Verlander. Phillies have to get their second oh, no. and that is ball one on Kyle Schwarber. Phillies first time through, four strikeouts, no base runners. Schwarber's one of those strikeout victims, saw a lot of pitchers, but ultimately took strike three. Verlander's 1-0. strike in this inning, or at least feel like your chances of coming back would be much better if you could use the top of this lineup and find a way to get Justin Verlander in the stretch. He's got the first nine hitters out. Yeah, boy, he is just in the rocket chair. Yeah, he just does a great job mastering that mound. He's a short step, but high release point pitcher. And what that means is you're able to to see the ball at a different angle and it's just an illusion to the hitter. And so what he can do is stride's gonna be shorter than no one. But it's it's classic. When the when the arms see one the hands when the hand goes up, it's like having a a string from your elbows to the knees. When the elbows go up, your knees go down, up, and when the elbow go down, your knees go down. And then he delivers that kind of poetry in motion. Classic. I just think lifeless power, it just, it could, he's got power forever, he's 39 years old and he still has power because he knows how to use his body and his mechanics to work with him. Yeah, the mechanics, the mix, the mentality, really the complete picture of what it should look like. His 1-2 to Kyle Schwarber is oh. a little bit inside ball two. back in 2005. He's in his 17th year of majors now. Over to the Astros at the deadline in 2017. Won a World Series two months later. Rocks and fires 2-2. Schwarber sends one in the air to center field. No big deal for Chaz McCormick. Worn away in this fourth inning moments ago. Tom Producci oh. visited with Dusty Baker. Dusty, we saw you share a laugh with Kyle Tucker. Can you share it with us? Well, I don't know, we were just talking about some things and I told him he was going to get hot during his series. And, uh, you know, it's, it's nice to laugh with him once in a while during the game, but you don't have many opportunities to do that. How about you, Justin Verlander, first time through the quarter, throwing a lot of fastballs, no hits so far. Well, the thing about him is, you know, he's well locating it. And, uh, you know, nothing's better than a well located fastball, and that sets up everything else. Because the last couple starts, he went not locate his fastball quite as. Uh, as sharp as he is today. Thanks so much, Dusty. All right, you're welcome. Yeah, that's what he does for strike one on Reese Hoskins. Yeah, he's attacking the hitters, and, and he can do that now with a nice, comfortable five-run lead, but he isn't thinking about a five-run lead, I promise you. Hoskins in the center field. He's got the first base hit of the game for the Phillies. inning against Justin Gerlander. And his Hoskins hot stretch continues. I mean, he's pitched long enough and the, hit and the players in this game have played long enough. They know the importance of when a team scores. If you can bounce back and get a run or two, it just feels better that you're back in the game. And Justin wants to put up that zero better than anybody. He knows who's on deck and he knows how quick this game could change. So, yeah, The man on deck is Bryce Harper and JT Real Muto trying to help set the table for him. So Harper was acquired in March of 2019, but a month before that, the Phillies made the trade for this guy. What? And just the total package when it comes to a pressure, completely eliminates the run. He's in there just about every day, led the majors in innings caught. 
Might as well wrap it up offensively. Well, we talk about rest. I can't think of anybody that, that probably enjoying the rest more than JT. Talk about all the games he's caught. I mean, at some point, there has to be a give and take, right? It may not be defensively, it might be offensively, but he has been able to be kind of a bulldog. And to your point, when they got him, that was a game changer for Philadelphia. Of course, Harper, you know we're going to have it for 13 years, but this is a huge move for Philly. Traded for him and then extended it. It's fourth year with the Phillies now. He reaches out, that's Pat DeVerman, and then knocks it down. His only play is at first. In the square position goes Hoskins. Well, with Bryce Harper coming up, what you're going to see is typically not the norm, but what he's adjusted to in the postseason is, okay, you want to pitch me away? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get one in a zone, and I'm going to make you pay for it. And that's what he's been able to do. Nine hits, three of them homers to the opposite field. So that has changed the scouting report. If your biggest swing of his career so far right there on a pitch that caught too much plate, and that's what Justin Verlander and the entire Astros pitching staff is aware of, and they're going to look for things to see if A, is Harper changing? B, we don't want to be in a position to make that outer part of the plate and that short left field come into play for Bryce Harper. Justin Verlander first matchup through three fastballs by. Got three swings and misses. Fastball here is foul back. But do you see how easy it is for Justin to get to that ball off of the zone? Not every pitcher has that, that luxury of being able to pitch top of the zone, but it's easy. It's not forced. He actually enjoys the upper third of that zone because of his release point. And that right there, for most pitchers, is harder to do based on their style of pitching. This guy goes there more than any pitcher in the league. Justin Verlander, home with an 0-1. Harper rips it on a line to right, base hit in front of Tucker. It's like a funny bounce. They stop Hoskins. They stop Hoskins, and it stays 5-0. So Bryce Harper with a base hit. For Dusty Watkins, the third base coach, put the stop sign on. Wow, that is hard. That is a hard hit ball to not score Hoskins. When you look at how deep Tucker is, this is a slider, okay? And we talk about his ability to hit breaking pitches. He laces this. And Tucker actually had to back up. And Hoskins probably thought that was going to be an easy score. Not only was it not easy, Harper's like, I cannot believe with two outs that we didn't score that one right there. Just remember that moment and if it comes back against Philadelphia. And Castellanos with a chance here to bail him out, make it a new play. Castellanos popped out his first shot. And the reason I say that is it's a feel-good moment that doesn't feel as good until that runner touches home plate. Now, they still might hear with... Nick Castellanos getting a big two-out hit, but you can see the reaction of Harper of, oh my gosh, that ball was hit deep enough that should have scored. First two base runners in the game for the Phillies coming here in the fourth. Castellanos has been searching for big moments in the Phillies uniform. In his first year with the team, chance to provide one here. On the line, fading into foul ground. So the Nick quickly strikes two. As you see where the barrel of the bat is on the high fastballs, it almost looks like he's, he's underneath it, right? He's trying to get to those fastballs up, but he's getting underneath it, and we've seen pop-ups out of that pitch. So it would be, as a pitcher, if you're nervous about anything down, he'll be able to hit that ball. Up doesn't look like it, but down in the middle of the zone or outside, even reaching, he'll get to that ball and can serve it to right field if the height of it is not where Justin's been putting it. First throw for the Phillies, 0-2 from Verlander. Oh, no. Short swing and a breaker. No swing, ball on. Castellanos, one of the most aggressive guys in baseball. And that pitch was not too far away from where he's willing to go. Yeah, they've been trying, Kevin Long and uh, the show the Phillies have been trying to get the timing of his foot down. He's been jumpy and attacking the baseball. Not a good recipe if you're not on time, especially with the spin that Verlander can throw Digs it out, in the left base hit. Nick Castellanos goes down to that soft stuff and hooks a base hit in the left field. Third hit of the inning, and the Phillies are on the board. It's 5-1. A 
that's exactly what I was talking about. The ball down, looks like he can get to it, the plane of his bat, and that's what he did. See how the ball was down and didn't get off the plate? That swing, who knows what gets a hitter going, but the pitch up, he had no chance on it, and he got a chance to hit a breaking ball and get that point on the board. Very important for the Phillies. That's what it feels like they had to have when they get it. Base hit from Castellanos. First and second with two gone for Alec Bohm. So from one key hitter for the Phillies to another. Yeah, and look for a fastball. He wants to hit a fastball up out over the plate. Got a breaking ball. Banged it down the line. And the Phillies fighting it offensively here in the fourth. Harper's in the score. Castellanos headed home. He'll score. And a two-run double from Bohm. Philadelphia back in the game. It's 5-3. San Diego after San Diego scored four runs in the top of the first they came back with three were in that game and they ended up winning that game there's something special about Philadelphia and they're feeling that they can kind of out slug teams if they need to and two consecutive pitches in the area that uh, Justin Verlander did not want him but he I mean those are back breaking two out hits the good news is you were up when that happened but now the game is tight again this is something the Phillies have been doing throughout the postseason. Big innings. And reaction back in Philadelphia at the watch party. There's a chance for them to get pumped up about something. 5 3 game. Out of its second for Bryson Stop. He oh. takes the ball. And the Phillies, prior to their spring shoot, John, were 0 for 14 against Justin Berlin, who's breaking stuff this year. All three hits have come on breaking pitches. Yeah, in the middle of the plate, too. The last one, the first one they gave up to hit to Castellanos was down. You know, that wasn't a horrible pitch, but just the swing plane that Nick was allowed him to get to that ball. Turned it up a little bit there, 97 for short one. But I'm telling you, the whole life of that would have got sucked out of the Phillies if, if they hadn't punched a, a run across because of the top of the lineup and because they had looked like they were going to get one with two outs. Huge, huge couple of hits from Nick and Allen. I'm telling you, the key in this World Series for the Phillies to win, they've got to get that kind of production out of them behind Harper. Stop. Watch his flight to the fastball to the outside corner. And he's 70 again from Verlander. These are the gears I was talking about. He has 97, 98 whenever he wants it. The first second through the order got the leadoff man in this fourth inning. The three of the last four have come up with base hits. Four of the last five. On a one-two pitch, Scott takes ball two. Bryson Scott has six hits in this postseason. Five of them have come with two strikes. Early on this year, a lot of swing and miss. In fact, over his first month in the majors, he missed a third of his swings. The last couple months, and this is just one side of the ten swings. Base in the game's best here. 2-2 two -two from Verlander. And he stays alive, going up Leonard High with a buff fastball. Well, I mean, we've already seen some tough pitch selections against Scott because he fouled off three, four, five fastballs in a row, and you're like, I gotta change it, I gotta throw spin. Boom, big hit. He's showing you that his ability to get with two strikes to that pitch is enough to alter the pitch selection sometimes if you're not careful and you're not reading those swings. He's really not on him. He's just looking to get that pitch down so that he can get it. Kind of backwards, right? He's spoiling fastballs, spoiling fastballs, waiting for something else. That's where he's delivered. He's got Bowman at second and two gone. On his 2-2. Two -two. It's another fastball and another foul ball. Ago, and his adjustment has been good. Look, down and in, breaking ball, sweet spot to the lefty. That's what you always want to avoid. You want to either back foot it or back door it because his swing in the inner food is good. The beat goes on. Another foul ball. 
does start one of his best games in this ball park. The clinching game on October 3rd, Stott went three for three. And a home run, had a double. Phyllis, Philly saw him, and they drafted him in the first round. Pitch from Verlander. It's the first breaking ball, and he fouls that too. And in some pain. Did you see how all over he was with that pitch after seeing so many fastballs? He had a great swing on a very good curveball. This ball is almost to the point where you want it. Ah, he fouls it off his inside of his foot. Justin's going to throw another one of those. It has to bounce. And if he can bounce it just on the back side of the plate, he will go after that pitch. In my mind, based on the way that he attacked that breaking ball after fouling off enough fastballs. That fouled off three heaters in a row. Now fouls off that breaker. Four hits in his fourth inning for the Phillies. Three runs in. They're back in the game at 5 3. Scott continues to battle. Another 2 2. It's a breaker that bounces, and he lays off. a good job there. That one bounced maybe closer to the front of the plate than the back of the plate. And this has been, this has been what he does. Yeah, that one bounced in front. The bounce carries the plate from the back. He's going to have to swing it. Better and better throughout this year. He's done it against the best pitchers. He's the only guy that's ever reached four times in a game against Scherzer. This is the 10th pitch from Justin Verlander. 3-2. Takes ball four. As impressive of a walk as you'll ever find. Drawn by the rookie, Bryson Scott. That is something. Some of the first one of the game issued by Verlander. And the tying run is aboard for Gene Segura. from Capital One. Capital One is the official bank and credit card partner of Major League Baseball. What's in your wallet? Now before Segura bats, I want to remind you to start Saturday strong with a monster big noon Saturday matchup. Heisman candidate C.J. Stroud leads Ohio State into the biggest test of the year so far. 13th ranked Penn State. Waiting for the Buckeyes. All started at 10 a.m. Eastern with the Big Moon kickoff crew live from Happy Valley. Only on Fox, the Fox Sports app. Here's a guy in Gene Segura ready to face Verlander, who they've started to call Clutch Gene. He's always been a good clutch hitter, but he's doing it on the biggest stage for the first time. And I'll tell you what, this inning has not only been damaging to the Astros, but to Verlander, his pitch count went way up. Ball. Outside ball one. Set that moment where the five run lead now turns into a two run lead and get your offense back out there. But that's given Nola an opportunity to reset and the Phillies to reset. In this inning, he's going to be his 30th pitch. It's a strike. Right. Keep Segura first game of these playoffs. Game winning hit, part of the six run ninth inning for the Phillies. Now back to the very first game in the three game series against the Cardinals. They didn't score over the first inning. They had those six runs in the ninth. And Segura was right in the middle of that. And another game winning hit, game three of the championship series. On this one one, it's popped up. The second, and Jose Altuve. But the Phillies get back in the game. A game-changing inning. They hope maybe a series-changing inning. It all came with two gone. Castellanos put it in play. Boom with a big swing. A two-run double. And a brand-new game here in Houston.
location. A lot more. More day bites. Now imagine a great drop within three years of your home, and you get exclusive savings when you refinance at that new lower rate. More cash in your pocket. Save when you buy today and refinance tomorrow. Visit inflationbuster.com to get started. You've been working from home. But your roommate just took up percussion as a hobby. You need to drum up a new job quick and get out of here. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. An Indeed resume is more than a resume. It makes it easy to personalize your job search and even helps the right job find you. I see you're willing to relocate for work. Yes. COVID-19 moves fast, and now you can too by asking your healthcare provider if an oral treatment is right for you. Oral treatments can be taken at home and must be taken within five days from when symptoms first appear. If you have symptoms of COVID-19, even if they're mild, don't wait. Get tested quickly. If you test positive and are at high risk for severe disease, act fast. Ask if an oral treatment is right for you. COVID-19 moves fast, and now you can too. This is more than just a building. It's billion dollar views, perfectly located, an inspiration, and enough space to start an empire. LoopNet, the most popular place to find a space. Red loved visiting Grandma's house, and after saving Big and Amazon, she was ready for those uninvited guests. Shop legendary deals at Amazon. against these two teams. Houston might have the nod in a lot of them. But not a catcher. Offensively, that's where the mismatch happens. That's why if Maldonado or Vasquez can contribute at the bottom of the lineup, that is such a bonus to the Houston offense. It's been Tucker tonight, who had been struggling. He was 6 for 28 in the postseason. Just one batted in and coming in. And it's been Maldonado. Lays up one go. ball, one strike. Wow. 
to a pitcher and still to me in the booth. You should, I look back and laugh at myself. I'm like, he went. Yeah, right? Check. That's me. Check with me. A lot of movement. I like the barrel did stay oh, back. Good. Always looks different straight on. That's, sure That's why you got to have the first base umpire and the third base umpire be on alert for those calls, which is a tough one, by the way. There isn't a description on what a check swing is. I think it's the toughest call that an umpire has to make based on the way and the view that they're looking and making a decision. Did he try to hit the ball? Was he attempting to hit the ball? Or was he getting out of the way and check swing? Ground ball is short. Stout is position one. Colorado is out number two. What is umpiring crew that we're talking about? So lines up in the first game. James Boyd, 15-year veteran, his second World Series. Dan Isoni is the crew chief. He's a first base. For Trip Gibson and Jordan Baker, their first World Series. And for Lance Sparks still and Alan Porter, their second. So World Series, big stage for these guys, too. Yeah, good for them, too, to get that experience and work their way into this position. And I gotta say, throughout the postseason, the umpires have really done a pretty darn good job. They haven't talked any game about anything. Last thing they want to have the game end or be decided on the call. Altuve, six strike. Wow. Come on, you jinxed it, John. Umpires have been perfect, and then James Hoy goes a foot off the plate. He was just telling Altuve he likes swinging at that end. That's right. Yeah, you can have a big zone anyways. Right. Got the call there, too. And if you're no line, you get the call out there. Why not go right back with it? Absolutely. He's got a chance in his first one, two, three inning of the night. The Phillies get him three runs. The old classic shutdown inning he's looking for. Over the 0 2. Fly ball left center field. Schwarber into the gap. He's got it. And Nola does go a 1 2 3. Kyle Schwarber is due up second in the fifth inning. Game one rolls on. And we're back after a word from your local Fox station. This World Series, sign up for Taco Bell Rewards and get a free Doritos Locos Tacos after the first stolen base. Last year, Ozzy Albee scored America free tacos in seconds. And this year, you can steal your taco faster than ever, only on the app. Credit Union, building strength together means empowering people and being a part of the community we serve. And for our member Tony, it means having a financial partner who can keep up with him, with digital tools that let him bank anywhere, anytime. Join us today and learn more about our $300 checking account bonus. Additional terms apply. Visit citadelbanking.com 300 for details. Citadel, building strength together. For once, Dr. Oz is telling the truth. When asked who he thought should be making abortion decisions, Oz said, local political leaders. Local political leaders? Oz thinks abortion decisions belong to politicians like Doug Mastriano, who could ban abortion with no exceptions for rape or incest. So if you want to keep your right to choose, remember what Oz said about who decides. Local political leaders? And what that means for you. SMP is responsible for the content of this ad. A young boy, brutally raped in a psychiatric hospital by his counselor. And whose side was Susan Wilde on? The hospital's. As a corporate attorney, Wilde claimed the hospital wasn't responsible. She argued the boy's rape was simply a medical incident. That's right. Susan Wilde called rape a medical incident. And she did it for the money. The Russian leadership fund is responsible for the content of this advertising. After my stroke, I was just grateful to see Giselle and her kids. Across Pennsylvania, I keep seeing families that don't have enough time to focus on each other. They're struggling, left behind. We gotta make it easier for people to spend time with those they love. Politicians spend so much time fighting about the things that don't matter. I'll always be focused on what does. Access to healthcare, 
Lower costs. Good jobs. More time with those we love. I'm John Fetterman, and I approve this message. The 2022 World Series on Fox is presented by Capital One. Astros with two in the second, three in the third. Fiddles with three in the fourth. And a 5-3 game is Brandon Marsh leads off and takes ball one from Justin Turner. Nine one and two for the Phillies. After Marsh, it'll be Schwarber and Hoskins. The Phillies one time throw against Justin Verlander didn't have a base run. They found it. Five of them last inning. Pitchers, when you look at these two guys, both very effective, but much different looks from these two right-handers, and the numbers for them through four. Yeah, Justin, a little bit the last inning, got away from his mechanics, falling off a little more towards first base. He's a north and south, goes downhill with that high release. He's just spun it out, spinning out of his mechanics a couple times. Marsh down the left field line, that's a fair ball, and it ricochets in front of Alvarez. Marsh pushes it, on his way to second, he's got a lead-off double. And both nine-hitters contributing in game one. Well, the pitch got hand, and the ball down with the fastball gives Marsh a chance to get to it. Just inside out. He knows right away that he's got a great chance to get the second base. Oh! Brandon Marsh went into this at bat, over his last 14 of each strikeout, including his first time against Verlander. And he doubles down the line. The Phillies have the tie run up there. The form of the home run champ, Schwarzer, a curve for ball one. Now Schwarber's 0 for 2 today. The Phillies are hoping that another few days off like he had going to the championship series. He's with it in the World Series. Kyle's been dealing with a sore right knee. Hurt on a slide on October 1st. He's been playing through that. So anytime they can get him a couple days off, they like it. And you see why. He looks like a different guy. He looks refreshed when he comes back from a few days off. And just notice right there again, curveball that... Verlander throws, he stays quiet to the plate. Fastball, he's falling off of it, missing location. We saw the first three innings, he probably didn't miss location maybe one time. The last couple innings has been a little bit more of a struggle for him with that fastball command. 2-0, Schwarber on a curve, fouls it off. to the breaking ball. When you're throwing a breaking ball, you know you have to stay back and get on top of the ball. Fastball, you can get away with more. You can kind of let it go and, you know, let your velocity sometimes take care of the rest. But in the postseason against these teams, you got to have that command that will make you pay. 2-1. Doubles up on the curve, and it's 2-2. Two two. That ball has no chance from the hitter's point of view to even remotely be a strike, and that's why you give up on it. But he catches the top part of the strike zone on its way down. It's a breaking stuff that the Phillies started to rally against last inning. Three straight hits against his breakers. There's a couple good ones here to get back into the count of two and two. And then a fastball takes off on it. We'll see, here it goes again. Now with that fastball, see how he's at the set and he's ready to go, but then he gets a little loose with that front side and he spins off. See how he pulls away and that ball just gets away from him up, which was easier for him to do at the top of the zone early in the game. So a little bit funky with his fastball command in the last couple of innings. 75 pitches deep for Verlander. Here's his 3-2 to Schwarber. That's foul off. We'll do it again. Schwarber, who's had so many big moments, so many chances to have those moments throughout his career. He's in his eighth season. It's his seventh trip to the postseason. And his first time in the World Series since that legendary 2016. He missed the entire year. Came back and had a 500 on base percentage for the Cubs. 
On another 3-2, he takes ball four. The first two have reached for the Phillies in the fifth. For every home run hit this postseason, T-Mobile's donated five grand to Team Rubicon's hurricane recovery efforts. For the tax relief, the 595959, T-Mobile will donate another five dollars. So far this postseason, 82 home runs hit. That's up to $410,000 of donations for Hurricane Relief. Well, that's going to get the Astros scurrying in the bullpen. And for Hoskins, he's looking, again, if Hoskins can stay up the middle right side, he's got a chance to hit this breaking ball. If not, he's going to pull it to the left side for possible ground ball. It is a breaker, and it's hit foul. And see, I know it's easier said than done, and he's disappointed in himself missing that pitch. You don't ever think you're going to get that ball right there. But if you're pull happy and you're really trying to do damage in the air to lift the ball, a good breaking ball is going to make you pull over, they say roll over, and hit it to the left side of the infield where Altuve will have an interesting double play turn because of where he's positioned. Hoskins got first hit for the Phillies last inning. He got a fastball here and popped it to center. Shortstop Payne is out. For the first hit of the field. That's a huge job if you're Justin Verlander. Again, the style of baseball, you see these numbers. When he's been in the game and they give him five runs of support. I mean, that's that's just, you've got to believe it's it's got to be a mistake, I said. No, it's the truth. It's 160 down to two. Now, that's when he's in the game, not when he leaves the game and the team scores five. You can still lose that game. Brian Brady was one. Last time he lost the game like this, we've seen that in those five runs of support, was 2013. He's won 67 in a row. Time run aboard. Go ahead, run at the plate. JT Real Mucho. Hit it hard his last time. Hit it hard both times. But he's Come two. Up. Come on! JT's been pretty patient. Again, you know who's behind you if you're JT. You want to look for a pitch and try to drive it. But here's a situation I would think if JT was ever going to be aggressive on the first pitch, it would be right here. Let's see, the Philly catcher was and fouled it back. He missed that pitch. That was a good fastball. But these are the kind of cat and mouse games you got to do. You know, for Justin Verlander, who's used to getting through the lineup three times, you save certain things for certain hitters so that when there is runners on, you, they see it for the first time. You don't just pitch the same way. Now he's challenged with that. Got ahead. See how he goes to attack JT the rest of the at-bat. Marshall second. Shorebird first. Owen pitch. Ramuto got a breaking ball, lifted it to left center field. McCormick and Alvarez on the move, and it's off the wall. Both runners will come in. The Phillies have come all the way back and tied it on the fifth. JT Riamuto with a two-run double. series with Philly all the way through and JT had really struggled with runners in base and he just came through with one of the biggest hits of the postseason hanging breaking ball looks like he's out front but he's strong enough that he kept his hands back to get to the gap and the runner reads it incredibly well Schwarber even with his bad knee right away had a great view on that ball easily scores and ties the game this Philly team it's amazing when you think just might be going the wrong way. Boom, they come right back in the game. Well, if you haven't watched the Phillies yet this postseason, here you go. This is what they've done. Dig themselves out of a hole, no blink. And now Harper swings and misses at a first pitch fastball. Justin Verlander stays on for Harper. You saw Abreu's warning. Abreu's the best guy at limited damage against left handed hitters. Verlander stays in what is now a tie game. Harper one for two today. And no one. Fouls it off and it's only two. Burning 
want to get into the probability of them coming back against some of the things that we talked about with Justin Verlander. I mean, it had to be a high number when you think about 5 nothing lead. And now, we're start over. 5-5 five, five in the fifth. Harper lays off the fastball. Down 5 nothing against this guy. He's probably going to win his <laughs> side on this season. For three innings today, they didn't have a base runner when you combine the five innings that he threw against them in early October. <laughs> so he ain't no hit in this field. There's one two to Harper. He is chopped up the middle. He is waiting in the shift. Two to Harper. He'll the third. Oh, this does so much for Philadelphia. They get to keep Nola in the game if they want. And they keep the, the, the key to their success so far in the postseason, short series, short bullpens, right? Starters go six or seven. They only have to lose two or three guys. And they're comfortable on the road. Let me just tell you, that might bring in Alvarado now that the game's tied. They're comfortable on the road because that's what they've had to do to get here. Was it 17 days in a row? Yeah. Castellanos fouls it up. They finished the regular season into the postseason on what became a 17-day road trip. They had that 10-game trip to end the regular season. They got into the postseason, and they had to go play the two games in St. Louis. And started the division uh, series in Atlanta. We got a hero's welcome. And we're back in Philadelphia. We saw Jose Alvarado is warming. Brand new game here in the fifth. Castellanos chops one foul and it's on two. There again, that ball down. Now Justin gave up a hit on that ball down to see if he makes the adjustment to go back up. That, that looks a little more, I know it's down and out of the zone, but that's where he got that breaking ball hit. Just reached out and got a huge hit. Trying to get the Phillies the lead. It takes a fence one away. Ball on. Tell yourself as a pitcher, no matter what the circumstances are, stay back, deliver the pitch. Stay back, deliver the pitch. Sometimes you rush. One, two. this like his last inning. The velocity went up in the last two pitches. Verlander knows he's nearing the end. You know he's got 89 pitches. He hasn't been quite as sharp in the last two innings. First year head pitching coach Josh Miller. Watching his ace here. Try to keep it tight at five. Riamuto is at third with two gone. And one of the big reasons he signed with the Phillies, a chance to play in some big games. So I've hit my home runs. I've made money. I want to go into the biggest games. On this one two from Verlander, he's down on a sharp breaker. That finishes the top of the fifth, but how about this? We are halfway home in game one. The Phillies have taken a 5 nothing deficit and evened it up with five in a row. Today, let's paint with Bear Dynasty so that you can be proud of your walls. Where is your furniture? Oh, we got it distracted from the new Bear Dynasty paint color. Let me take your coats. Because Bear Dynasty only takes one coat. <laughs> Bear Dynasty. Go ahead, throw your wine on it. What? Stain repellent. It's also scuff resistant. <laughs> bear Dynasty, the best of bear. Exclusively the Home Depot.
the fully electric Audi e-tron family is here. With models that fit any lifestyle. And innovative ways to make your e-tron your own. Through elegant design and progressive technology, all the acceleration, none under compromise. The Audi e-tron family. Progress that moves you. Customer service over the phone or on the Progressive app, pretty much anywhere, even at the library or the coffee shop. Get great customer support at the park or at this coffee shop. Why would we go to a different coffee I'll shop? I'll order for J Money. Thanks. So is one of these places going to be my car again? Or right, and at your car. Um, Come on, I saw you eyeing these cones earlier. Huh? Huh? All right, you get it. Help keep your engine running like new with Shelby Power Nitro Plus. Join the fuel rewards program and never pay full price for gas again. Save even more on fuel when you shop at our stores. Fill up, save up, and snack up at Shell. When you're running a business, you know not all bars are created equal. So switch to Verizon, number one in customer satisfaction with small business wireless service, according to JD Power. On the network America relies on. Verizon. Well, we expected a pitcher's duel, but look at how these pitchers do it differently. Seven feet from the ground and release point, and about five feet from the release point. And then the extension, a little bit different for each two. A little short stride, even though he's a big pitcher at the top of the zone. Six foot one extension, and then look at six foot nine out of Nola. There's a bunch of ways to get it done. Both do it a little differently, and I am... We're in a tight game, but I thought it might be one-to-one -one and not five-to-five. Five. Yeah. All right, with two aces on the mound here in game one. Tied at five to the bottom of the fifth. Nola stays in. Ball misses with his first pitch. The two-hitter, Jeremy Payne. Okay. Saw Jose Alvarado warming for the Phillies. But that run of left-handers coming here with Alvarez next. Open up by Bregman, but it goes Alvarez, Bregman, and then Tucker. Figure there's very little chance he faces Tucker. Who's holding against him twice. Yeah, I think uh, the, the whole scenario might be damage control. I, I would, man, it would be tough for me if he gets Pena out, if he goes right to Alvarado. But you know what? Philly has done things a little out of the ordinary, and it's working. So hard to question their success at this point. Rob Thompson, the magic touch in so many ways. I huh? took over for Joe Girardi after the 22 and 29 strike for these Phillies. They won their first eight games with him as the manager. They won 14 of 16. First time big league manager. Baseball life get his first chance. Something that he thought wasn't going to happen. He had come to terms with that. That he had lived this great baseball life. Do it a little bit longer, but probably not going to be a big league manager. He gets his and he's just brought this overwhelming sense of calmness and ease and a quiet confidence to his young team. This pitcher Nola's home with a 2-2, and Pena's down on a good changeup. One going to this fifth inning, and tonight's telecast is sponsored by Verizon. The network of America relies on. And you see Rob Thompson there out of the Phillies dugout. He is going to make the change. Manage aggressively all postseason. He'll continue to do so here. The lefty Alvarez. His best lefty in the bullpen's coming in. Ever wonder why I call it the American dream and not the American goal or the American plan? Maybe it's because in dreams. You can do anything. You can be 
reborn in the Motor City and rise up in the city that never sleeps. You can turn time inside out again and again. In dreams, you can hold your entire world in the palm of your hand. And you can do it all with your eyes wide open. Maybe if I wait here and ignore my unpaid invoices long enough, they'll pay themselves and magically disappear. Nope, still there. Why wait? With QuickBooks, you can send invoices and get paid four times faster. I'm the captain of the TV football team. We are... Mommy! Annoying. Go, go. Uh, thanks, Mom. <laughs> if you have cut rate car insurance, then not even the hell Mary will save you from paying for this. So get all state. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Well, in just three weeks, the biggest sporting event in the world kicks off as Christian Pulisic leads the U.S. men's national team. They return to the World Cup stage for the first time in eight years. The FIFA World Cup starts November 20th on Fox and FS1. Liberty Beach for a game summary. Game one of this 118th World Series. The Phillies and the Astros are tied at five. The Astros got the first five runs of the game. Two homers from Kyle Tucker. The Phillies have rallied to tie it up. They have. Interesting uh, strategy here with one of your highest leverage guys. And they feel like, I'm sure Rob Thompson feels like this inning is the uh, marquee inning to keep it tied. But with Alvarado and this bullpen, It'll be interesting to see how he plays it in a tie game. You're going to employ all your resources now in this game in a tie game. You kind of have to win it. And that's what he's trying to do now that he's back in the game. they got to get one of these two. They know you shouldn't feel good about their chances going back to Philadelphia. And going for it here in the first game. One away for your down Alvarez. Walked his first time and grounded out. Jose Alvarado, who has thrown more pitches of 99 miles per hour than anybody this postseason, double the next guy on the list. 99, oh, and a bit low. Uh, 99, and uh, the, the sinker that he has, low in the zone, is actually a strength to Al Alvarez. So Alvarado's going to want to use that cutter, which nobody seems to be able to put in play or hit for any kind of average on the year. And Alvarez pops it up. It's out of Bowman, the third baseman. The old man on the left side, he drifts back and makes the catch, and we go down to Ken Rosenthal. Well, guys, it might have seemed like a quick hook in some regards, but this is the way Rob Thompson has managed the entire postseason. Go back to game three of the NLCS. Remember, Suarez, Ranger Suarez, pitched five innings, 68 pitches. He pulled him, went from his bullpen for four innings. This is what he's trying to do here. It's the same thinking, the same urgency that he's displaying. And it's worked. The Phillies sweeping the Cardinals in the wild card round, beating the defending champion Braves in the division series, and then the Padres in that thrilling championship series. Alex Bregman takes strike what? one and 101. He's just easing in with those first couple of 99. There's Sir Anthony Dominguez. Now the script for the Phillies may be similar to what it was for the Nationals in 2019, where it's kind of that inner circle of pitchers that Davey Martinez went to to help them pull that up so with these Astros. Clear advantage for Houston is the depth in the pitching step. The Phillies don't have them. They might be able to match up with their top few guys, and the hope for Rob Thompson and the Phillies may be to just use those guys. Well, he's putting a lot of confidence in his offense that they're going to score some more because you're bringing in your highest leverage guys to keep the game tied on the road. 
the time of trial, if he's got that confidence and he's squeeze a run or two in the past, because what the Astros have in the bullpen, too, is some pretty heavy thunder, and it's deep, 5, 16. Whereas Rob would love to stay three, maybe four relievers if he could throughout this series. <laughs> the one-two pitch. Redmond down swinging on the pitch <laughs> that has changed Jose Alvarado's <laughs> and, and he gets the two men that he faces. Three with five, tied at five. Tonight, Daddy, I'm going to read to you. Not far away lies a magical place where people start work with a smile on their face. Some build castles with big metal beasts, while others rise early to cope giant feasts. But every great workplace like the ones you see here, make people their purpose, so they grin ear to ear. Make your fairy tale workplace a reality with HR software from UKG. You're a base fan here. Here, even up here. Only T-Mobile gives you free Wi-Fi to stream games in the air all flight long. And you're connected to the playoffs overseas with high-speed data in over 215 countries and destinations on us. Stay in the game this postseason with free Wi-Fi all flight long and high-speed data around the world. On the ground, in the air, or overseas. T-Mobile gives fans coverage beyond the expected. Record inflation. Groceries up 13%. Gas up 36%, and crime is out of control. But instead of helping us, Joe Biden sent $66 billion to Ukraine. Billions more on weapons, instead of helping us. Now, Biden says his fight in Ukraine could lead to nuclear Armageddon. World War III. Hell no. Citizens for Sanity paid for this ad. just got a big update just in time for everyone who works with other people just in time for more togetherness just in time to say oh you bet we'll be there because the updated vaccines can now protect against both the original covid virus and omicron and that's a moment we've all been waiting for not only want you to face your fear you to smash it. Well, normally you get the starter out of the game and you're like, all right, good, we get into that bullpen. That is not the case here. The Astros bullpen has given up three runs in 33 innings this postseason. And Brian Abreu comes home to Alec Ball. Oh, no! Let him go! Check swing, no swing ball. And it doesn't matter who they bring in, John. These guys are getting zeros for it. Oh, they're nasty. And, you look, it's it's a battle of the bullpens. You've got to give the advantage to Houston. But we'll see how this game goes. And they have some power and spin and the ability to mix and match. No more evident than an 18 inning 0 0 game against Seattle, which they won. Baum into right field, right at time for the first down of the sixth. Well, during the regular season, they had a major league best 280 ERA. Part of it is that they threw fewer innings than anybody. Starters went so deep and so less exposure for this bet. They don't have, or they haven't had any lefties. They're going to carry one lefty in this World Series and Will Smith, but the big left-handed hitters the Phillies have. But even the righties get lefties out. They've taken it to a new level in this postseason. Giving up just the three runs on three solo home runs. That's been the only way to get to the pen. Well, this guy since July has been almost unbeatable. Two earned runs in 34 and two-thirds inning. That is, that's pretty filthy, and that is on a roll. Look, when you're a team that gets to this level, you want to flex your strengths, hide your weaknesses, right? This is a strength that they want to flex. 
Now, if Philly can cause a dent in one of their strengths, that becomes a confidence for Philly that says, we can match you only for so long out of our pen with our three or four high leverage guys. Because that's been the key for Rob Thompson, is that he hasn't had to manage a long series yet. Two games in the wild card, then four, then five. Oh! Strike and 22 on stop. This guy is just three throws fastball, less than 50%, and breaks out his slider, curveball. Really doesn't have a changeup much that he will show. It's primarily those three pitches. Here's his one, two, stop. Walks his strike three, pinpoint at 99. Moments ago, Ken Rosenthal spoke with Rob Thompson. Rob, why go to Alvarado in that spot? What you're thinking of? I just think that we got the momentum back for scoring, you know, the three and the two and got it tied, and I didn't want to, I didn't want them to do anything right there. So he's our, he's our best guy in those left hitters in that spot, so that's why I want that. We've had some memorable innings this postseason. The fourth inning, we're down 5 nothing to Justin Berlin. What made this one so special? Just grinding out a fast. You know, these guys never give up. They're real, I've said it all year long, they're really resilient. They never give up. They're fighting constantly. Rob, thank you. Thanks, man. And the move works for that fifth inning. Rob got the two guys that he faced. The Braves coming out firing. He's ahead of Segura on one. He's ahead on two. My Lord. Yeah. It, it almost looks unfair right now. There are two things that, he, that that statement said to me is, hey, I trust my starter tomorrow, Wheeler, to cover whatever innings I may lose tonight. But if I can win that game and use all those resources, i got to start on the model on the model tomorrow. And two, to his point, he thinks he's going to find a way to scratch off a run here or there and keep that leverage going. Bada bing, bada boom, bunch of heat from Abreu. Blows him by. One, two, three in this sixth inning. The man of the moment tonight, Kyle Tucker's got two home runs and he leads off the bottom of the sixth. I need to know if Wakanda is under line or an enemy. You can come and find out. sci-fi movie you need to finish the special effects that look good and if you want to save by bundling home and car insurance you need geico okay. uh -oh. see how much you could save by bundling with geico is that gonna be a problem this game can't be contained by a stadium or boxed in by a flat screen the spirit of baseball is all around us is being celebrated. MasterCard is there. And the game belongs to us. Priceless. Peaceful state. Food fleet. Wait, are you my blind pink? Dancing crew, a trip for two. Now the final interview. Buy or less. Masterpiece. Inside joke. Artichoke. With Doug. Brand new love. Give me a kid. Give me a hug. The more you want to do, the more we want to do. Boosters designed for COVID-19 variants are now available. Brought to you by Pfizer and BioNTech. A corona and palm trees. Huh. A corona and calm seas. And a bomb breeze. And some long knees. Strong like a tongue squeeze. You'll say, oh, when I make your lawn freeze. Was that good? No. Oh. It was incredible. Oh. Lee Bad. Oh. But this, this is good. I shouldn't have wrapped. Bending down to the ground to put on your shoes is kind of a pain. Until now. Introducing new Skechers slip-ins. Hands-free technology for your footwear. Just step in and off you go. Putting your shoes on has never been easier. Plus, they're even machine washable. Go hands-free with your footwear with new Skechers slip-ins. 
Jose Alvarado got the last two outs of the fifth inning. Here he is for Kyle Tucker in a tie game in the sixth. Game one of the World Series between the Astros and the Phillies. Kyle Tucker tonight, two home runs. Knocking in four to five for Houston. Lefty lefty matchup. Yeah, the first pitch swing. Schwarber started back, comes on. Kyle Schwarber's there. One pitch, one out. That could be it for Alvarado with Eflin in the uh and that is. Alright, so Zach Eflin, one of those inner circle guys we were talking about, will be the next one here. Right-handed batting Yuli Guriel coming up. Okay. Hello, is our messenger pigeon. What? Oh my god. This is mostly secure. Most fairly secure. Yes, sir. This is crazy. You know what else is crazy? That SMS text that he's sending? It's unencrypted. Other people might see your text just like other people might see that letter. You're kidding. No. <laughs> Taco Bell went a bit crazy with its breakfast. It was too much. What you need in the morning is tasty, simple food. Fluffy eggs, sausage, hash browns, and a warm tortilla. So they should open a restaurant that only serves those breakfast crumb sticks. You miss it, or is this part of the commercial? I may be close to retirement, but I'm as busy as ever. And thanks to Voya, I'm confident about my future. Voya provides guidance for the right investments. They make me feel like I've got it all under control. Voya, be confident to and through retirement. What if I told you the next great hybrid technology wasn't for a new car or computer chip, but it was for the best revive every time. Hextrans hybrid cookware gives you the performance of stainless steel, the durability of cast iron, and the convenience of non-stick. Welcome to the hybrid revolution. Welcome to Hextrans. Can't believe you're doing this alone. I've done it before. I remember. You threw your back. How you holding up? Come here aboard. Nothing wrong with getting help. I'm good. I did it when Felicia left. I'll figure it out. I know you will. But you won't have to do it alone, that's all I'm saying. If I promise to look into it, will you drop it and help me build this fence? <laughs> now you need my help. It's gonna be a real pain sometimes, you know mm -hmm. If you or a veteran you know needs support, don't wait. Reach out. Find resources at va.gov slash reach. The Niners Rams. I wonder if this is the best rivalry right now in the league. I think it is. The NFL. Sunday on Fox. Tied at five game two, same time, same place. Tomorrow night, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, right here on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Zach Wheeler is going to go for the Phillies. Proper Valdez is for the Houston Astros. This is an interesting matchup here. Uriel has not had a great first pitch average when we hit 278. But I think he likes that two seamer over the four seamer, and that's that heavy sinker that Eflin throws. Here we go, first pitch, going out, yeah. takes outside by one. Zach Eflin gave up three runs in game one of the division series. He's got a 1-6-9 ERA otherwise. This is somebody who's helped solidify that bullpen. A one-time starter. In fact, his entire career has been as a starter. And that career has been undermined by the knee issues. Multiple surgeries, eye out again this year. And when he came back this year, they said, we don't have enough time to build you up for the rotation. Let's see what it looks like out of 10. And they've liked what they've got. This is put in play. It's not an easy play. And Gurriel is aboard. Couple of instances tonight of the Astros putting the ball in play and taking advantage. First of all, it's an incredible effort by Eflin just to get to the ball and make the bare hand and throw. His foot slipped just a little bit when he made that throw. But this is another one of those hits for the Astros. Perfectly placed. Again, he gets it slips just a little bit on the back end. 
one of the hardest plays a pitcher, no matter how many times you, you practice it in spring training. Boy, it happens in the World Series, and you never know. And hey, who says third base or baseball? Look at Yuli Gurriel with an infield hit. So the go-ahead run is aboard for the Astros, their first base runner since Tucker's home run in the third inning. And Trey Mancini into the plate. He told his story earlier tonight. Cancer survivor. Didn't know if he'd ever get back to play baseball again, let alone find himself in the World Series two years after beating cancer. 5-5 in the sixth inning of game one as Van Sumer takes one one As important of the top of the strike zone was for Verlander, it's the opposite for Eflin. He wants that ball called down because if he gets the call down, then he can get hitters to chase that cutter off the plate. And that's the pitch he wants, though. Stay there, put pressure on the hitter and the umpire. Here's his 1-0. Down there, but away, ball two. Mancini's still looking for his first hit of this postseason, but 0 for 14. First one gone. Two up. Strike one. Dusty Baker has seen the World Series again. He was a manager looking for his first ring as a manager. <laughs> like this. When he's ahead of the count is where Mancini's done most of his damage. And he's got a 2-1 count. He took that pitch 2-0 for a strike. This would be a better matchup for Mancini, I would think, to be successful. On 2-1, he lifts it down the right field line. Castellanos, come on. Segura going out. And it's Castellanos for the catch. Phillies fans have seen enough things go sideways defensively, but they might hold their breath a little bit longer than other teams' fans. So that's caught by Castellanos. Two gone in the sixth inning. Chaz McCormick, an unlikely hero in the championship series, hit two home runs. And he comes up here with a go-ahead run aboard. Yeah, you saw that one was a sinker. This one was a fastball away that pulled it like a left-handed hitter. His setup was set for that pitch to go that way, and he hit a sinker for the first home run and a heater up a pole for that second. The only two guys that hit more home runs the other way this year, Giancarlo Stanton and Aaron Judge for that short porch at Yankee Stadium. Chaz McCormick takes ball long, and he's kind of set up not as tall and as big as Stanton, but he's got that close stance. Guys are as tall. No, probably The other first, two gone here in the sixth inning. Bornick, who's one for two today, on this one on pitch, takes a long ball two if it continues to fall. Eflin doesn't quite have a secondary pitch and spin that would give McCormick trouble, and McCormick actually likes the ball down, so. Do you pitch to your strengths or do you pitch to a hitter's weaknesses? At this point in your, you know, of the game, you've got to pitch to your strengths. But stay out of the one area where he can drive the ball and do damage. On a two-all, McCormick hopes it foul and it's two-and-one. Chaz is a 21st round draft pick in 2017, signed for just $1,000. You hear about these exorbitant signing bonuses and bonuses that guys get. Got one grand out of a Division II school, Millersville University in Pennsylvania. So beat the odds to make it to pro ball out of Division II. He made it to the majors. And I'll start in the postseason. 
On his 2-1 pitch, McCormick lays off ball three. The three and two on Chaz McCormick, and so Yuta Gurriel representing the go ahead run gets a head start here. There he goes, here it comes. McCormick ball watches ball four just hits. Go ahead run into scoring position. Well, he got fooled on the pitch, but he got the reward of the call because a good breaking ball just misses inside, it looks like. Good try by JT, and that one did not come back to catch the inside part of the plate. And again, Aldonado could come up huge. The two outs here, already got a base hit. Hit a hard run ball to shoot. A couple of times the game has found Aldonado at the plate. Two on, two out, and a tie game in the six. The Astros' nine hitter takes ball one. They say about Maldonado, if you could quantify leadership, he would lead the lead. And so the fact that he doesn't do anything offensively normally, they don't care very much about that. He means so much otherwise. He can chip in offensively. Man, oh man. He's ahead, two and one. As all these Astros hitters are finding themselves against Jack Bethlehem. Normally aggressive, you can see Alvarez saying, slow down, slow down, wait for your pitch. He's, he can jump out and want to make things happen as a hitter, and he finds himself swinging at that pitch. Now you can kind of breathe in a coffee can strike zone if he gets you that, that pitch. And then that's when you let the barrel the back up. The real high 15 home runs this season for Maldonado. On a 2-0 pitch. Chops in the third. Bohm in the backhand play. Across the diamond in time. Alec Bohm with a defensive play of the night. And a tip of the cap from his first baseman, Reese Hoskins. It stays tied at five. And back after a word from your local Fox station. Like John Federer, everything to the extreme. Why are we letting murderers out? 
Why is the solution always tax and spend? Extremism on both sides makes things worse. We need balance. Less extremism in Washington. I'm running for Senate to improve people's lives. That's what doctors do. I'm Dr. Oz. I approve this message. Tired of high gas prices? There's a fix. With just a stroke of a pen, President Biden can cut up to 30 cents off every gallon you pump by fixing the federal renewable fuel standard. Reforming the RFS would lower your gas prices, protect our nation's fuel supply, and save American refinery jobs. It just makes sense. Fix the RFS. Visit FuelingUSJobs.com to take action. And urge President Biden to fix the renewable fuel standard today. Now, when you custom order your new Ford truck, get what you want, the way you want it, the options, the performance, the stuff that makes you, you. And now get 3.9% APR financing for 60 months on select Ford trucks, only from your local Ford store. <laughs> truck with lights, sounds, and two racing hot rods. Get it now at HessToyTruck.com with free shipping and batteries. I'm John Fetterman and I approve this message. Doc Oz and his punchy loafers is attacking me on crime. Dr. Oz wouldn't last two hours here in Braddock. Fetterman wears Braddock's past on his sleeves. The zip code tattooed on one arm, the dates of murders on the other. Public safety is why I ran for office. When two of my students were murdered, I ran for mayor to stop the violence. I worked side by side with the police, showed up at the crime scenes. We did whatever it took to fund our police and stop gun deaths for five years. Want more postseason stats? Just ask Siri, who leads the MLB postseason in RBI? There's your answers. Thank you, Siri. Harper and Hoskins tied up with it 11 apiece. And this game is tied up with five apiece to the seventh. Brave stays in. That's strike one. And one hitter, Brandon Marsh. Brave doing something he's yet to do in the postseason. That is pitch more than the on for Verlander in the sixth. And a one, two, three on nine pitches. It's a guy who a year ago had a 575 ERA. Dustin Baker talked about his confidence. And it's always one of those things. What comes first? Can you just trick yourself into the confidence? you got to get the results to have it. I don't know what came first, but a 194 ERA and a weapon for Dusty Baker. got here really quickly. He was 22 years old when he made his debut straight up from double A. That's a fly by the right center field off of the bat of Marsh. And he's a play with the tackle on the first out of the seventh. All right, so let's look back to that last out of the sixth inning. Alec Baum, much maligned defensively this year, but a great play. Uh, he's a tall third baseman, lanky, and then certainly knew that he could one hop it to his first baseman, Maldonado running. But I'll tell you something, for what the Phillies were not known for, timing is everything. If they can sure up and play some solid D in these seven games, they don't care what the regular season is like. Top of the order here, Kyle Schwarber walked and scored his last time. 5-5 five, five game, 7 inning. Schwarber takes a shot. Again, only one left-hander down there in the Astros work on Will Smith. But Abreu has been as good as anybody at stopping left-handed hitters. Loves those breaking pitches, and he's not given up a home run on a breaking pitch to a left-hander in his career. And tight, and his front side when he stays kind of locked into its own plate, the ball jumps out of his hand. Again, it's the same thing. Every hitter has the timing with their feet and getting it down. The same thing with a pitcher. The difference is that front side for both the hitter and the pitcher. If it leaks at all, it affects the mechanics of their job and what they're trying to do. But this is a big, strong downhill pitcher with electric stuff. Lands a breaking ball and it's one and two. He's thinking about it against Schwarber. All three of Schwarber's home runs this postseason have come on fastballs. He only has one hit against a non-fastball.
One two pitch. Two and two. Schwarber's given the Phillies exactly what they were hoping with this signing that contract in the offseason. He's given them power. 46 home runs. He's given them leadership. Called the voice. Heartbeat. Certainly brings a postseason experience. Any position player that's played in the World Series for the Phillies. That's bounced over the mound. Brady waits on it, and then it's kicked. Pena couldn't get it, and Schwarber's on. That is some funky spin and bounce to that. And Pena normally is so sure he couldn't get it clean. Well, it changes after it hits the pitcher. Here's the ball back to the pitcher now. He deflects it and totally changes the spin. And when the infielder goes to get this ball, it's not spinning the way he thought. It hits him on the heel. And Schroeder gets rewarded. I put down base hit. I, yeah, that's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Right, you're right, because you're using pence. Yeah, that could have been it for my scorecard. I got a really impressive streak going, not that anybody cares. I'm normally not good at keeping score. Hoskins, you would have been great out of this place. Right now, I've been locked in. Locked in. You better be the defend, I'm telling you. One ball, no strikes on Hoskins, who had the first Phillies hit. Kind of looked like game one was going to be a runaway for the Astros. They had a 5 nothing lead. Justin Verlander was mowing him down. He was perfect through three innings. Hoskins, though, get a base hit to become the first base runner on the fourth. They scored three times in that inning. And two more in the fifth to tie it. And Hoskins at the plate here. And really, Reese Hoskins' postseason arc has matched that of his career. Yeah. There have been some great moments, but there have been some really low moments where he's heard it from Phillies fans. Only to be spawned, only to bounce back, and get more big moments. It's a guy who came up early. Here's the face of the Phillies very quickly. They arrived in 2017, and over the next few years, that may be in the face of disappointment, the face of falling short. It's in his sixth year now. They've got the bigger names in there. He's no longer the face. He's the guy to describe as their heart and soul. And this one one from a brave takes ball two. Well, I've never seen anybody turn around the moments better than the bottom of the barrel to the top, right? I mean, he's handled everything. You don't know what the insides are like, but outside he's handled everything the best way you can, then rewarded his fan base with incredible two two-run homers after hearing the rumors. On a two-one pitch, Hoskins takes right two. That's a consider that he started the postseason one for 19. He had a defensive mistake that led to a loss in Atlanta. The next game, he hits the 3 1 home run with nine fingers in Philadelphia. Only to go back into a slump, strike out three times in game three of the championship series, followed that with three home runs over the next 48 hours. On this 2 2 pitch, Hoskins is down swing. Abreu's third strikeout. So you've seen a pitch like this, you have no idea the spin and break that comes out of the hand of a guy that throws 97 miles an hour. That's why hitters swing like that. You're sitting at home thinking, anybody, I could be that. I could lay off that pitch. No, you can't. It is just so difficult to make that decision and split under a second. Looks like a strike for Everett. Breaks under the Two gone, and it's real moves away. That foul tip square off the mass. Bottom of the sixth. Tied this game with a two-run double in the fifth. Talk about Gene Segura waiting a long time to play in the postseason. Real Muto had the same story. Playoff debut for him after nine years. Bunch of losing in Miami. Came to the Phillies, lost more games than they won over his first three years, but finally getting into the postseason here. He doesn't do it a lot, but he can go to right field. 
with that shift on as he gets the right pitch. Next year, Joe. That's right. It will be no shift. Shift's going away. We talk about it. Rivers didn't make it go away. Velocity was too high. Spins too great. Although this year would still be legal. But oh, too great. On the right side of the diamond. Robert first, two gone, one one pitch. Ball two on oh. Rio Muto. With Grace Harper waiting on deck. He took advantage of the pitcher right there and did get a huge jump. And now JT's got a great count to hit, knowing who's behind him. And now America just got a free taco. Unlock the Doritos Locos Taco. And the app will sign up for Taco Bell Rewards. I believe last year all these got people on top of the shows. Legend for that. And now Schwarber stealing his way to second. Go ahead, run in the scoring position. The game the Phillies once trailed 5 0. JT Rio Muto takes ball four. And Bryce Harper again finds himself in the spotlight. Five five game in the seventh and a quick move from Budweiser. Hit the buzz is back from the World Series. Every time a team hits the buzz, Budweiser will give fans a chance to win a season for the field. And a man a chance to win. Well, the stars align for him and really for all of us on Sunday, watching that game right for the moment. And the man that's proven that he's made for that kind of moment. In a sport where you can't guarantee that the best player is going to have the ball in the biggest spot. So that eighth inning at bat really was a gift. And not only for him to go into that spot, but then to actually come through when you all kind of had the sense that he would. That kind of stuff doesn't happen in movies. That's kind of stuff that happens in movies. The star player comes up with a game on the line. And well, you can see foot down, power stroke, blatantly at bat. This seems to be happening more and more. We've seen the aggressive swing early. I'm sure we'll see another aggressive swing early, trying to get power in the first swing and then go to work on the pitcher after that. Two on, two out. Tag him in the seventh and a ball with a fastball. The walk missed down. So I kind of felt like Bryce Harper's whole life has led up to this. Uh, the championship series of Bryce Harper in the World Series. And the superstar in the kind of zone that can win you a postseason series. Doing with Big Poppy, good for the Red Sox. Doing what Alex did for the Yankees in 2000. Recently what Juan Soto did, he carried the Nationals to the upset. Two on two out of the seventh, the 1 0 pitch in the dirt for ball two on Harper. And if you're a brave, you've got to be careful. You're, you're, you're emptying the tank here, right? This probably could be your last hitter. And in emptying the tank against a great hitter, if you overthrow and force velocity, you then lose location, and that's when a hitter can be damaged. If it's still a natural late life, that gets by the hitter, but if you're getting a little tired, or losing a little bit, when you feel like you got to throw a little harder, that's when you get in trouble. Two a pitch, Harper takes ball three. How about Harper? We're talking about the 
is so aggressive and so locked in, taking these three pitches. Yeah, not anywhere close to what he wants. He took a good 3-0, but, but trust me, I think the green light is as big as it's ever been on a hitter, and he knows what to do with it. The ball looks bigger than it ever has to Bryce Harper. you got to figure at this point. He's got Schwarber at second, Rio Muzo at first. Won the championship series for the Phillies, now trying to put him in front of the World Series. Six a strike and it's three and one. And the Astros desperately trying to get out of this inning, and the Phillies are trying to continue that magic with two outs. With really 12 runs, they are so much a backbreaker at this time of the year. Been doing it the whole postseason. 3-1 pitch. Harper takes ball four and the bases are loaded. Back-to-back -back two out walks from Brian Abreu. And Harper passes the baton to Castellanos. Abreu is going to pass his to Hector Neres. Game one of the World Series tied up here in the second. used car to buy? Nope. Why not ask the most confident person you know? My old high school coach. <sighs> this one's got talent, toughness, the will to win. Let me coach you on this. Just say, show me the Carfax value. You'll get the most accurate price based on the vehicle's accident history. Look for me and stop overpaying. Shop at the all-new Carfax.com. It's the biggest night in politics in the 2022 midterms live on Fox News. With the balance of power line, we take you inside the states that everyone will be watching and break down the biggest races in America with the country's key issues at stake. Our team has up-to-the-minute results and analysis from across the nation and an unmatched multi-platform experience so you're always in the know. This one night could change the course of history. In a matter of days, it's Democracy 2022 on Fox News. Your freedom, your vote. Not only want you to face your fear, we want you to smash it. Earlier today, as part of the Fall Legacy, Fall Classic Legacy Initiative, MLB and the Astros Foundation commemorated the donation of a new Chevrolet van to the Buckner Family Hope Center. Visit MLBcommunity.org to learn more. Enjoy the thrill of the World Series presented by Capital One with the MLB app. Get daily lineups, live pitch by pitch, and more. Our free app with 150,000 reviews. Download the app today. This first pitch will tell the story in this inning. Bases loaded, the pressure's on the pitcher. But if the hitter expands the strike zone early, it's either going to be a quick action one way or another. You see if Nick Castellanos can stay in the strike zone or if he expands at first pitch against Neres. Against the longtime Philly, Hector Neres. Base is loaded on a tie game in the seventh. Most aggressive guy in the business, Nick Castellanos at the plate. And he takes ball one. That's a better sign for Nick in the way that he's approached this game, the time off, the work, everything about it. Neres has got that splitter for an out pitch. Tough to get any hits off of that pitch when he's using a 45 strikeout on that pitch. Base is loaded for the Phillies. Nick Castellanos, 1-3 with an RBI tonight. 1-0. He swings 
and this is pretty much off the same pitch. And see, that's the, that's the thing about a hitter like this. He's dangerous if he gets the hit early, but he also brings the pitcher back in the fold. Bases loaded is a pressure-packed scenario for a pitcher, but if the hitter is aggressive, it then lessens the, that stress on a pitcher to throw strikes. Same pitch. Got a, a ball on the take and then a swing and a miss. Took the emotions for Hector Merrick, who so, so badly wanted to play for a postseason team. He says that's why he chose the Astros in free agency. And his first time in the World Series comes against the team that he spent his first eight years with. In the fire here in the seventh, his 1 1 pitch it is grounded foul and it's 1 2. Set his sights down on the fastball as you bring that split. The split comes out of the same height of that fastball, almost impossible for Nick to stay off of it. Prescription straight nasal X now over the counter. Only allergy pills and works at the source of nasal congestion for all day, all night, all year round allergy relief. Nasal X, celebrate normal. I join Uber One to save money on my important deliveries, like gravy nachos, staplers, market price swordfish. And the zero dollar delivery fee is clutch, because I'm famous. Well, not famous, famous, so. Uber One saves me money on vodka. Holla at me. <laughs> I need to save money for when I get canceled. Yup. Because I don't want to go back to selling pictures of my feet. Oh, I'm in this place. Save money with Uber One. Ah, yes. I need to ask you. Three hours. <laughs> Guess I'll be right here. <laughs> need someone more emotionally available. We seemed like a good match, but in person I'm just getting a lot of mixed signals. It's the bobblehead, isn't it? I love your smile, but I can't do this anymore. 
I thought you were in home. Oh gosh, Max, don't do this. There's a better way to bring the game home. Visit MLBShop.com for your favorite team gear and today's special offer. Just from the drastic differences between the team, I thought it was going to be closely contested. I thought it'd be two to one, but it's five to five. It's going to be one of those series where, again, each team has strengths. Who exercises it? Who flexes it early? It's going to take over two. Well, when you look at this game, had you been told that the starters would be out early, each team has strengths. This is one that, on paper, favors the Astros. Yeah, absolutely. The depth favors the Astros. And what the Phillies are trying to do is, again, steal a game on the road, which they've done every series, and then play flawless at home. They're undefeated. Now, Johnny Zach Efford's going to stay in the game here. He's not been sharp. He better find it in a hurry. Top of the order for the Astros. championship series came on in a tough spot he needed two pitches to get two outs to send the Phillies to the World Series and in game one he's coming in out of the bullpen 5-5 five, five in the seventh for the first time ever the FIFA World Cup will be played during the holiday season <laughs> the biggest sporting event on the planet back in the middle of the holidays I actually think it's going to make the holidays a lot better Fox News with the balance of power in the line. 
We take you inside the states that everyone will be watching and break down the biggest races in America with the country's key issues at stake. Our team has up-to-the-minute results and analysis from across the nation and an unmatched multi-platform experience so you're always in the know. This one night could change the course of history. In a matter of days, it's Democracy 2022 on Fox News. Your freedom, your vote. NFL doubleheader starts with the Bears taking on Dak and the Cowboys or other regional action and then an America's Game of the Week the 49ers and the Rams or Saquon and the surprise Giants against the Seahawks. Check your local listings for the games in your area only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. So it is Ranger Suarez who finished off the championship series clincher. Now, the last time that he pitched in this ballpark, it did not go well. His last outing of the regular season, October 4th, he gave up three home runs in what was the worst start of his career. Well, this young man, what I've come to learn, uh, yeah, he was a reliever before. He's been a starter this year for Philly and really locked down that role. He's got a heartbeat that you don't see, and that's a great formula for him to come in that last game and get two pitches, two outs, send the team to the World Series, this moment's not too big for him, but the big man at the plate, he has done some damage off of left-handed breaking balls in the last two years, 11 home runs off that pitch. He's the number one left-handed hitter against left-handed pitching in baseball this year. He takes ball one from Suarez. It's kind of like dark if you do, dark if you don't. You don't like the idea of a righty facer, but he crushes lefties too. Here's his numbers against Suarez, two for two. Bob Thompson managing aggressively again. As far as in the game, tied at five in the seven, is one off. In there for a strike. Now, we've talked about if you follow the uh, National League playoffs postseason, this man, Suarez, is smooth. Smooth customer, great defender. The mechanics look at times flawless for him to deliver his three pitch points. Of a guy. It is. It is. Especially when you know you're going to start again. Now, I get it. Now, if he was extended for any reason, they could push him back to game four. Game three or game four is going to have some days off, and they could put Syndergaard in the game three. But this is a role that he feels he can accomplish and still make his start. That's a sweet thing to him, too. But the one thing about this, don't buy in, but this is a side game. I hear that all the time. Well, it's a side day for the pitcher. No, a side day has no adrenaline, has no velocity connected to getting out. So it's still a, a function of getting in the game, getting warmed up, and having your heartbeat going. Can you make your start in two, three days? Yeah, no problem. But it's not the same as just having a side day. His 2-2 two -two pitch it is inside for ball three. It's back to that. Harrison for the 2019 Nationals, Patrick Corbin with it, started again, came out of the bullpen twice. So there's somebody they're clearly going to lean on here. Glad they sat there, as if to say, through that pitch com again, couldn't hear it. Receiver in his hat. 3 2 to Alvarez. Got him swinging. Ranger Suarez comes on and strikes out. You're done, Alvarez. After seven innings in game one, the Phillies and the Astros deadlocked at five. Take a selfie video. 
2024. and magically disappear. Nope, still there. Why wait? With QuickBooks, you can send invoices and get paid four times faster. Be a post-season powerhouse with the MLB app. Get inside every matchup with exclusive stats, analysis, and first-look information. Stay informed with personalized real-time updates. Listen to this crowd! Enhance your viewing experience with MLB's Game Day. Get locked in only with the MLB app. Hunters gave up five runs here in Game 1. Both bullpens have put up nothing but zeros. And John from one hard-throwing, filthy righty to another, Rafael Montero. A no smaller version, but he slings it. Alec Bohm leads off and takes strike one. Bohm has a two-run double in this game. Also has a great defensive play at third. It's part of this resurgent year. He struggled in the postseason for the most part. Right at 200. And having a good first game of his first World Series. He's going to go too hard. Yeah, he's going to throw against right-handers. Primarily fastball, 75% clip, but then he's going to throw that slider off a bit with an occasional change. But he said he's not very good, but he gets the ball to home plate really quick. Wiry just snaps it. Terrell's now pitched in seven of the eight games this postseason for the Astros. 32 year old having a breakout year and striking out ball on three pitches. Martinez, but kind of the style that the ball would come out of the hand of the great Pedro. Terry was somebody who had parts of four years with the New York Mets. I think that was as a starting pitcher. And then he missed a year, and he goes to Texas, to Seattle, to Houston at the deadline last year. Strike one on Bryce Estrock. One of the many guys there is going to good. To dominant here in 2022 from the Astros bullpen. Stop with two K's in a walk. Back to back here. Same two. Three and easy and lets it go. You know, for the Astros, you already touched on it. Because their starters went so deep, their bullpen's still pretty fresh with a longer playoff system. Yes, they got a we've got to rest because they had a bye in the first round, but boy, does that help a team get through this journey when you have that many arms to go to. 
All hard stuff so far. Stays with it and just misses. Scott fouled off five pitches in an at bat against Justin Verlander to coach a walk out of him eventually. On a one-two pitch, it's a fly ball to deep right center field. McCormick has room. Two ball on the eighth. I'm going to make this statement as a little premature, but, but I, I, I can't. It would be hard pressed if the Phillies were able to win the World Series. I think it would be the most improbable win of a World Series of anybody with my time frame for what they came from, what they had to do, who they had to beat, a new playoff system that I don't think would be the norm, meaning does this mean teams that just get in will get to the postseason and the World Series? No, they have just proved to themselves and that team what grit and grind has done. So, look, they've overcome a lot already. Segura with two gone, gets on the it. Rafael Montero fives right through him in the eighth. To the bottom half we go in a 5-5 game. Part of the lineup coming up for the Astros. Alex Bregman having a monster postseason. He leads things off. COVID-19. Some people get it, and some people can get it bad. And for those who do get it bad, it may be because they have a high risk factor, such as heart disease, diabetes, being overweight, asthma, or smoking. Even if symptoms feel mild, these factors can increase your risk of COVID-19 turning severe. So if you're at high risk and test positive, don't wait. Ask your healthcare provider right away if an authorized oral treatment is right for you. It's your time now. cash back on every purchase everywhere. That makes you the hero of every purchase. Yeah. And heroes don't take the stakes. Is this a parachute? Ah! Ah! What's in your wallet? Hey, check this out. of every month. The all-electric Hyundai Ionic 5. It's your journey. Football. Beer. Wings. Yes. Boneless wings on pizza. TVs. Overtime. Wings on pizza. Sauce. French. Wings on pizza. Wings. Pizza. Pizza. Wings. Wings. Beer. And now pizza. Beat Ups is the only place for football. A progressive. If you want to protect the homes and autos of those who bundle, you must become a true master. When you can take the ball from my hand, you'll be ready. Just... Does this mean I'm ready? I mean, technically, I guess. Yeah, if you want to do it that way. Blue bounce. We got now. Keep your engine running like new with Shell V Power Nitro Plus. Join the fuel rewards program and never pay full price for gas again. Save even more on fuel when you shop at our stores. Fill up, save up, and snack up at Shell. Hey, game on at MLB Shop. Authentic on field caps, tees, hoodies, and more. All your postseason fillies and Astros here. Where with the chance where at the official source, MLBShop.com. For the month we go in game one, tied at five. Part of the order for the Astros, Alex Bregman to lead off. It's against Ranger Suarez, who came out to get the last out of the seventh inning. He struck out Jordan Alvarez. Game three starter for Philadelphia. Trying to beat the bridge to the back end of the bullpen here in game one. 
first one to Gregor is Faust back to him. The best fielding pitcher in the National League this year. Looks like he's out there playing in the backyard. No, he just finishes in such a good position to be able to do this. So calm. <laughs> I mean, doesn't he look like he's playing catch on a Sunday afternoon back home? Yeah. Definitely against slow hockey, but he's going to face one more hitter, and that guy has been a record. Philadelphia, giving it four by himself. Tucker trying to get a third one. And we showed those three home runs the Suarez gave up to the Astros back on October 4th. One of them came to Tucker. One of the 30 that he hit during the regular season. Two of them tonight. Here in the eighth, cracks his bat on a flare that is foul. The second bat that he's broken. Two homers, two broken bats. First player in Astros history to have multiple home runs in a World Series game. And he's the fourth guy to home run each of his first two plate appearances of the World Series. You are the beneficiary of one of the other three. Andrew Jones, yeah. First two swings in his uh, World Series debut. It's Eddie Pettit. Tucker for so long underrated. Right like this, that's probably not going to be the case soon. Putting himself into the spot. Shopping one foul. One, two. There are times like Sunday in Philadelphia when the Stars make the game. Right place Harper hits the home run. There are nights like tonight. Where the game can make stars, where the postseason can make heroes. So of a guy like Kyle Tucker. Solo shot in the second, three run homer in the third. Here in the eighth, he takes the ball in the 22. Well, the Astros, besides their great run in the last six years, a lot of these guys, they seem comfortable in close games. You know why? Because they're a confident team. They played a lot of close games this postseason, and one ball. But I mean, five.
The Niners Rams, I mean, I feel like every time they play, it's down to the wire, it's physical. Aaron Donald told me, you don't like them, and they don't like that. I wonder if this is the best rivalry right now in the league. I think it is. The 49ers are a win-now team. They go out and they try to get a all-pro caliber player. Any team would love to have a show like this. The NFL, Sunday on Fox. <laughs> in a matter of days, it's the <laughs> biggest night in politics in 2022. <laughs> live on Fox News with the balance of power on the line. Our team has up to the minute results and analysis from across the nation. It's Democracy 2022 on Fox News. Your freedom, your vote. <laughs> Two going here in the eighth inning. Trey Mancini. Big swing and miss. Slider from Trey Anthony Dominguez to get strike one. But Dominguez, who is an admitted overthinker, really hard on himself. So he started to trust it early on in his postseason and said, I'm back. I'm a different guy. Believe it like never before. His 0-1 pitch. Got another chase, and it's 0-2. And why not go out there again? There's Ryan Presley. Yeah, two off the plate. Obviously, you can see me not seeing the spin. Two goes back there and gets him. Three consecutive spinners away to get Mancini. No way. It couldn't miss your chance to get Francisco Lindor's autograph. We can. But now you're going to need someone new to sign your paycheck. I need indeed. Indeed, you do. When you upload your resume to Indeed, you get personalized job suggestions based on your skills and preferences. So you'll be back in the game in no time. Yeah! May God give you for every storm a rainbow, for every tear a smile, for every care a promise, and a blessing in each trial. T-Mobile believes in going beyond during times of need. In this postseason, for every home run hit, we're donating $5,000 to hurricane recovery efforts. And right now, when you text RELIEF to 595959, we'll donate another $5. Beautiful day, Well, most people probably know that GEICO could save their money on car insurance, right? You see, the thing is, GEICO, well, could have on boat insurance, too. Hi. Okay, I'm ready to come in now. Hello? 
I'm trying my best. Seriously, I'm, I'm serious. Request to come ashore. Geico, saving people money on more than just car insurance. Red loved visiting Grandma's house. And after saving Big and Amazon, she was ready for those uninvited guests. Shop legendary deals at Amazon. Whopper Junior Fry, drinking nuggets all for five bucks. My queens love it. Fit for a royal fam on a budget. I rule this day. Add BK. Have it your way. Astros bullpen, John, they go great, great, great best. Ryan Presley here in the mound. Nothing straight for Ryan Presley. A lot of cutters and big over-the-top curveball. 9-1-2 for the Phillies. Brandon Marsh has got a double in this game. Swings and misses. Had a first pitch breaker. Ryan Presley's pitched in five games this postseason. He's not given up a run. Best in the American League, Presley. Got him from the Twins at the deadline in 2018. His own pitch. Inside corner. Tighter breaking pitch. Now everything's going to have to cut action on it. The Phillies would take this scenario. Told them they'd be tied going into the ninth inning to put pressure on Houston. They'd take it. Well, Thompson pulling all the right moves. Aggressive. With his bullpen. Curved and a slider. Now another two. Oh, no. Respect to the curve and it's one and two. Both bullpens putting up nothing but zeros. Starters, they gave up all five. The Astros again. Second, three in the third. Against Aaron Nola. Phillies got a three in the Justin Verlander. I think they didn't have a base runner against him through three innings. Starting the ninth. Two balls and two strikes. I don't know if the crowd's kind of like a, a nervous miss to it. I mean, they're seeing their club win every close game so far in the postseason. But here at the top of the ninth. They're looking for at least. Chance to back with a tie. 8 9 1 coming up for the Astros in the bottom of the ninth inning. Astros seen this one 10 consecutive one run games back to the regular season. Bouncing ball to second for Jose Altuve. And Marsh is the first out of the line. For every home run hit this postseason, T Mobile has donated $5,000 to Team Rubicon's hurricane recovery efforts. New tax relief to 595959. T Mobile will donate another five dollars. T Homer's hit over four hundred thousand dollars in donations for Hurricane Relief. So back to the top of the order. Kyle Schwarber has got a walk and a single tonight. Slow. 
first pitch from Cressman is a breaking pitch low. He's like Shorter has struggled with his postseason. He's crushed fastballs. He's not done anything against breaking pitches or chain drops. That was some legendary postseason performances. And add another to that storybook. See the difference on that pitch, if that's over the plate, Schroeder has a better chance to get his hands out and let that back go. But it looks inside, and when it looks inside, it feels like to a hitter it's going to keep chasing you. But he hits the upper quadrant of that strike zone. I think that Schroeder's best chance would be for a breaking ball all out over the plate that doesn't crowd him. that have been here before. Jesse against Schwarber. A tie game in the ninth inning. 2 on pitch. Schwarber takes a strike, but it's 2-2. Two and two. Takes ball three. He's worked it full. That's what he does. He always has. Yes, there's a high strikeout total at the end of the year in the regular season, but he can make the pitcher throw a lot of pitches, especially with two strikes. Now, he's not going to be into a two-strike approach. He's still trying to drive the ball, but he's looking for a mistake. He's trying to steal one in Houston. Series for the first time since 2009. Simply in the playoffs for the first time since 2011. We'll see. They're the longest route in the National League. And the first year, Philly Schwarber. That's his great three. Second change up that Presley pulls. Hoskins. Crossed it. Out of down. The 
It's the biggest night in politics, and the 2022 midterms live on Fox News. With the balance of power on the line, we take you inside the states that everyone will be watching. And break down the biggest races in America, with the country's key issues at stake. Our team does up-to-the-minute results and analysis from across the nation, and an unmatched multi-platform experience, so you're always in the know. This one night could change the course of history. In a matter of days, it's Democracy 2022 on Fox News. Your freedom, your vote. For the first time ever, the FIFA World Cup will be played during the holiday season. Well, we can put the biggest sporting event on the planet smack in the middle of the holidays. I actually think it's going to make the holidays a lot better. Kind of. Oh, my goose guys. <laughs> we're just getting ready for we got work to do. We're going to need a ton of stars. And lots of sweaters. Some freshly baked cookies. And lots of mistletoe. Um, do you have any idea how busy I am this time of year? Okay, maybe not a song, but just think of a lot. And don't forget the points. Go west, the best. Only good and ladies and ladies. I get back. I'm free. I think the US will get all. Kitchen winners get hitched. Tonight. Ooh. For better or worse. It's wrong! Was that a wedding or was that a funeral? <laughs> Hell's Kitchen, only Thursday at 8, 7 Central on Fox. Pretty players will stack the most total bases each day during the postseason. Compete to win 50 grand. It's an MLB base chase. And the MLB plan for MLB.com slash play. Restrictions apply. See the official rules for details. No out in the postseason. No out in the World Series is simple or easy. Add it all the way. Oh, my goodness. Up there a long time. <laughs> All right, so here we go, tied up to the bottom of the ninth inning. Eight, nine, and one for the Astros against the best of the Phillies. Into the back end with Dominguez. It's Chaz McCormick. It's a foul and strike one. Well, we sit in the fifth that Rob Thompson was putting forth the high leverage guys to try to keep the game tied and hope that his offense would score. Well, he's done that part, keeping the game tied, but the offense couldn't muster anything so far against the great Houston bullpen. And he's got his big boy out there again, Suarez, trying to get him to the tank. 0-1 pitch. McCormick shoots it foul, and it's 0-2. Sorry, Dominguez, not Suarez. Suarez was the... Of course, for San Diego, they gave up the 2 on one to Harper, so the reason the Phillies are here. Dominguez trying to extend the game into the tent. Hey, there's a lot of dudes coming out of that whole thing. Yeah. You understand you and mix it a couple of them up. It's the fourth one of the game for the Phillies. Astros lose four as well after the starters didn't really have it. All ten runs in this game against the starting pitchers. 0-2. McCormick, it's modern out of and that's two of them. The Astros, all these postseason appearances, their fourth trip to the World Series over the last six years, they only have one walk-off win in the World Series in franchise history. One of the wackiest games we've ever seen. Game five against the Dodgers in 2017. Alex Bregman provided the winning hit. 13-12 game. 
here in the ninth, it's the corner. He takes one, and the count even is two and two. The answer to one of the questions for the Astros going back a couple of years. Who's the guy in center field? Trying to answer the question, who's the hero in game one? 2-2. Two -two. Down swinging. One gone in the ninth. Christian Vasquez set up for Martin Maldonado. $250,000 has already been donated to the Jackie Robinson Foundation through the Capital One Walk-Off Program. For every walk-off during the World Series, Capital One will donate another 75 grand to the Foundation. It's after the 75th anniversary of Jackie breaking the cover barrier. Well, here's another guy who's not been with the Astros, but who is very comfortable in big spots. Had a walk-off home run for the Boston Red Sox in the postseason last year. The World Series with the Red Sox in 2018. Good playing time this postseason. Dusty Baker looking for a lightning strike. Perfect what? pitch. Struck one. And this power stroke, which he found a couple years ago, I haven't really connected with that, but he does have power, likes to fall down. Now there's no one that comes inside and he takes it. That would spoil his manager Boston. All he's said about it. Everyone, no matter what you say, he's still always bet on this guy in the spot. He's the kind of guy who loves these kinds of spots. Two-year-old in his eighth year in the majors. Deadline pickup. One-one pitch. Fouled off, and it's one and two. We know the Cubs had opportunities to go get some swings underneath, but can you imagine sitting most of the game and coming in in the ninth inning in a tie game and facing a hundred and a slider that we've seen just disappear on the outside part of the plate. Yeah, such is life. Big hitters these days. Everybody coming out of bullpens doing stuff like this. A one-two pitch, Vasquez takes one two. No matter what happens here, the Astros are going to get Jose Altuve to the plate with a chance to win it. Unless, of course, Vasquez ends it himself. Over. I don't remember much at all. I'm in this game here. 
for four tonight and three for 37. Always one swing from flipping that all around. On this old one pitch, out two pay, tips the ball. See, now that's a better take. Being, if you're looking at seeing when is that two going to come out of it, that take right there means something to a hitter. Sometimes it does take the ability to track a baseball better that gets you back on line. That right there. See if you can stay disciplined against this pitcher to stay off that pitch. Swing and miss one and two. Fastball away. You can see the back foot of Altuve coming off the ground. Trying to hit that pitch. The one two pitch. Stays alive. Jose has four walk off home runs in his career. One of those in the postseason. The famous one to clinch the pennant against the Rodas Chapman. Face of his most dominant era of Astros baseball. 5-5, ninth inning, 1-2, Altuve flies it to center field, Marsh coming on, still coming, that ball's down! Altuve with a dunk shot, base hit, and the winning run is aboard with two out of the ninth. Well, Marsh was playing pretty deep, and this big swing did not result in a fly ball. Watch how deep he's playing. You see how he's goes back just a little bit. That's all it took. Big swing, little power on this guy, and he thinks it's an out right away, but now he recognizes, oh, that <laughs> And Jeremy Pena gets rewarded with a chance to be the hero in the ninth inning. He's answered every question along the way. Filled in for Correa. Could he do it in the postseason? He's done that. Can he do it in the World Series? Position, impossible throw, makes it bang bang, and it goes to review. So he's not out until right about now, and you see the bag kind of move as the glove goes off the side of his leg to the back leg. Say says I'm safe. See, the ball's not in the glove. Right there, it's off of his leg, but not quite on the bag. And then he gets to the place where he can. I don't know. I think it's one of those genres where whatever the call was on the field is probably going to stand. That was a great tight shot. JT Real Muto. Well, just by being back there. A lot of times, completely cancels out the run. But Altuve tries it. And it speed. You know it's a straight steal. You didn't look back at all. Sometimes you look back to see what the hitter's doing. Here's a straight steal to get him in the scoring position. So far, he's there. After review, the call on the field stands. Right. All right, 
So slow miss for Jose Altuve, who has won that dimension back into his game this season. And not bigger than that. Running, running, scoring position for the rookie Jeremy Pena. Well, now that puts pressures on the outfielders. The outfielders are playing deep when he was at first to prevent the double. Now they can't play as deep. Basically, we're going to play at the depth not only to handle this ball, but in case of base hits a play. Pena takes a strike one on one. Just incredible poise from the skill. Some of the big leader. This veteran Astros team trying to win game one. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fly ball off the end of the bat. So right field. Castellanos saves the day. And sends game one to the tenth. Nick Castellanos of all people with a diving defensive play. And instead of game one ending in the bottom of the ninth, we've got extra innings. Cash Plus card from Capital One because it gives us unlimited 2% cash back on everything we buy. And it has no preset spending limit, so our purchasing power adapts to our business needs. We use our 2% cash back to help cover our employees' health care costs. That's how we take care of our most valuable asset. Our people. It may sound cheesy, but we like it that way. What's in your wallet? Right before that pitch, Kyle Schwimmer over in left field shouting over to Brandon Marsh. You can see him looking over there. And then Castellanos as well saying, come on in, give yourself a chance at a throw on a base hit. And it winds up giving Castellanos a chance to get under this. Yeah, that was a good read, too. The only way he makes that play is a good read. And certainly that would have been a tough pill to swallow if you're the Phillies on two pop flies. Wow. Right would have fallen in. But that man right there has saved the night. And he gives the heart of the order a chance here. I don't include him. Real Muto, Harper, and Castellanos. So the 10th inning, Luis Garcia. Again, an extra innings duty for the Astros. That's ball one to Real Muto. Garcia in the 18th inning. Two hits over five scoreless innings. Of course, he's a starter, and it's one of the most unique deliveries you'll ever see. He calls it rocking the baby, or rocking the cradle, because he's going to rock and move and tap dance on the mound before he delivers a pitch. Christian Vasquez, after pinch hitting, stays in. Real Muto. Takes a strike and it's one and one. I can't even understand about his fastballs. It doesn't look like it's 98. That's what makes it special. He just kind of comes out of his hand and spins the baseball well. I mean, he, can, he can hum it up there. 
does things. Nice and easy. Comes short and gets right through. In the high 90s and they're breaking out of the same window. 89. And you know, out of that delivery every once in a while, he can make it a quicker pitch if he wants to. If the timing of the hitter gets off. He certainly is unique. There it is. Oh, there's a quick pitch, two and two. Yeah, and you gotta have you gotta have good balance to be able to do that and not get burned on a bad pitch because if the hitter is watching your delivery and timing your delivery in the sense that okay, it's the same, 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 and all of a sudden, whoop, that's enough to mess up the timing of the hit. Ramuto tied this game with a two-run double back in the fifth. He starts the tenth by working the count full against Garcia. All the runs in this game got one shot. The Astros got two in the second. They got three in the third. He's got three in the fourth and two in the fifth. Bullpen's putting up a bunch of goose eggs. This is the fifth reliever for the Astros. Three two from Garcia. Real Muto shoots one in the air the other way. Back goes Tucker. At the wall. It's gone. Real Muto starts the tenth with a go ahead shot. He tied it in the fifth. He gives him the lead in the tenth. And from down five nothing to lead game one six five. gives it about as good an effort as you can. Home runs have told a big part of the story for the Phillies in this postseason. They haven't hit one yet tonight. Strung some hits together to tie the game off. They use one to take the lead. And now Harper fouls off the fastball and it's only two. We were talking about it earlier, John, but uh, Part of the MVP resume on this Phillies team this year for Rio Muto is what he did when Harper went down. In fact, the very next inning, after Harper broke his thumb, Rio Muto started that next inning with a home. He was hitting about 230 at that point. He hit above 300 the rest of the way and carried the team through those two months without their stuff. Harper fouls it off. Down to Ken Rosenthal. JT, what was your approach against Garcia? Uh, you know, I've actually never faced him before, so honestly, I was trying to... See a few pitches early in the count. I uh, was really just trying to get on base with the guys behind me. Uh, they've been doing a great job all year long scoring me, so I was just trying to have a good bat and get on base. Going around the bases, and if you go ahead and run in this game, what's going through in uh, the next layouts are going to be really hard. We've got the heart of their lineup coming up, so I'm just trying to focus on getting through more outs. JT, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it'll be Alvarez, Brinkman, and Tucker for the Astros. about a month apart in 2019. This is the largest payroll in franchise history. Big acquisition after big acquisition. Those were the first two really big ones. Harper and Rio Muto. Harper has his first or his second base hit of the game. The end of left center field. Big turn. Comes back to first. Back to back hits to open attempt against Garcia. We look back at the first one. Got the foot down and again took a pitch and went right with it. And I'm sure running the bases felt like he was light. Three knock 
captain tonight by JT Real Muto. Harper follows him with the base hit of his own, brings up Nick Castellanos. And we're not here without Nick Castellanos. Doing what he did to finish off game one of the division series to extend game one of the World Series. A diving catch in the third out of the ninth inning. Remember the Braves job in game one of that series had this rally going. They got a home run from Matt Olson to get back to winning one, put a couple runners aboard, and then Castellanos had a diving play. Somebody who's been awful defensively. But in the biggest moments for Shannon out there. Phillies are doing everything they were probably blamed for in the regular season why they were on the playoff team. Well, they have done all that they needed to do once the playoffs start. Their defense has not been great, but it's been better. It's been really good. And then we got them to start with pitching. So their offense has been timely and opportunistic, to say the least. They've bunched some runs together in some crucial innings. Strike on comes to the some elements you like. Another third pitch from the mansion. The ability to hit the ball out of the park at Robertson. And you can tell he's been on this stage before. Laughing, smiling down there. There's experience we know who they've got. But then they sprinkle in the charm, this undeniable charm that starting to feel like the Phillies have. Off the middle, Altuve. For the second, and then to first. Thing that you know has been overlooked, I guess, we documented, but it was five nothing after two. Five nothing, and it still have only given up the five runs. So there's your numbers on five run leads in the postseason. Five eighty nine and eighteen. When you lead five nothing, when you lead by five plus, and not only did they lead by. plus John, but they had Justin Verlander who looked untouchable. Yeah, so credit again, you know, Nola for holding Thor in the third, right? And then Bob Thompson said, don't. with that close to winning this game in the bottom of the ninth inning. Nick Castellanos, the defensive play to get it to extras. And then the first batter in extra innings, JT Real Muto, an opposite field home run. And in a game the Phillies once trailed 5 nothing, they lead 6-5. Now some going here in the top of the tenth. And back in Philly, what a scene. It's as wonderful of a sports scene as you are ever going to find. And it was like that in the division series, up a notch in the championship series. What's it going to be like on Halloween night, game three? Oh, huh? boy. Huh? Castellanos is in scoring position. And Scott is at the plate. This is Ryan Stanek. And this is, I think, the best example of how dominant this bullpen has been. Stanek's hardly pitched. 
This guy set the Astros record for ERA during the regular season, and they've hardly used him in the postseason. And he's got that split finger he can go to at any time, and he start bouncing in the two innings that he has worked. Bryson Stock, some insurance out there in scoring position. Two gone in the tenth. Fly ball back to third. Redmond has already made one fantastic play. Looking for another, but out of room as that ball hit the net. Dominguez one and one. The Phillies will try to hold onto this lead. And they've got Zach Wheeler going tomorrow. Who has started the first game of the previous series, but they gave him an extra day of rest. Then having finished off the championship series. He's more overwhelming than Odom. Odom a little bit better in terms of the uh, command, but Wheeler, overwhelmingly powerful stuff. 1-1 one, one pitch. Strike two on strike. That ball has been uh, an uptick in velocity in the postseason. You can understand that. And he has been hard to hit with his fastball, that's for sure. The two two the racing stock. are trying to become the first team in 20 years to win a World Series game after trailing by five. Last time it happened, Dusty Baker was on the wrong end of that one, too. Game six of the World Series in 2002, the Giants were on the verge of beating the Angels when the Angels got three in the seventh and three in the eighth. And they won game seven the next night. 2-2. Two -two. Well, I'll say this, about an offense that has a little bit more of an aggressive approach and more swing and miss, it seems to me that they've gotten a lot of counts in their favor. So a lot of 0-2, 1-2, the 3-2, and put a lot of pressure on this really good Houston pitching staff. Whereas you would think that would be the opposite, where Houston has done that to most of their opponents. Because we've seen, John, they're going to do what they do. They're going to stay aggressive. And they stay alive when they're staying aggressive. But I think they have, and then come through. That's a walk for Stott, his second one. The Astros have never won a game one of the World Series. Down 6-5 here. Hoping that Stanek can keep it right here. Alvarez, Brinkman, and Tucker coming up. James Segura fouls off the first one right on his knuckles from Stanek. Four for four tonight for Gene in his first World Series game. But of the bottom order, he's the scariest of the three. Stott has proved himself worthy, gets on base, battles. Had a great at bat against Verlander. But this guy, very unorthodox, can hurt you at any count. He can hurt you 0-2, 3-1. He has the same approach. He usually finds the barrel the back to the ball. Beats him most of the time for power. He'll just find hits. He's a hit machine. In my opinion, he's hunting for hits. Arrow where it's about by runs. This is a guy who's close to a 300 hitter in his career. And both his big hits in this postseason have come on pitches way out of the zone. Just putting them in play. Pops this one off of the hands. Vasquez can't get there. 
the flat swing, those quick hands that Gene Segura's got, the back-to-ball ability. He says all can be traced back to two things from his childhood in the Dominican Republic. One of them is hours and days spent as a kid hitting plastic bottle caps hmm, with a broom handle. And then the other thing is years of playing competitive softball, the low use point, the shorter distance. you got to have a short swing. you got to have good hands. Scary good savings. Bundle with NJM. We'll make a new bet around every two seconds. Not only on the game, but on the game of life. Betting with love is just a swipe away. Betting on picking up that curious hitchhiker carrying a bowling bag. And betting that he doesn't turn out to be a coin from a prodigy. Every moment in life is a bet. But life doesn't offer you up to a thousand dollars back in free bets if you don't win. So bet on America's number one sports book, FanDuel. And make every moment more. It's said we make 35,000 decisions a day. That's a lot to keep track of. But with the right insights from citizens, the money decisions feel easier. The Phillies are in the World Series, and then you have Eagles on Thursday Night Football. So you Fox, when they are. Well, if he turned away after three innings, he thought the Astros are up 5 0. They've got Verlander on the mound. He can seal game one. Oh, boy. Three for the Phillies in the fourth, two for the Phillies in the fifth. They take the lead on Rio Muto, home run in the tenth. And now David Robertson on to try and lock this one down. And David Robertson was in that last game trying to lock it down. Walked a couple batters, and that's where Suarez came in and finished the deal. But on the year, it's been very difficult for hitters to score off this curveball. He a lot like some of the guys in the game could spin it. It's a knuckle curveball. It goes out of his hand, pops straight up and goes straight down on his own. But he goes so he places on a throw in third. And boy, uh, Robertson's going to have to earn it. Alvarez, Bregman, Tucker coming up to the Astros. One to extend it, two to win game one. Alvarez has saved them before. Game one of the division series. Walk off home run. What a way to get this 118th World Series started. 6-5 in the 10th inning. Alvarez on a first pitch coming was ready for it. Twenty-seven. His 32nd home runs came against right-handed pitchers this year. Ten 
tonight. He's off for three. And a one pitch. Alvarez. Down the left field line. Foul. That's a good pitch right there. He had to try and get a fastball up in the zone to change his eye like eyesight for that breaking ball he can throw. Lightning quick back for Alvarez. He has struggled since that monumental game, the first series he had against Seattle. Robertson's 0-2. Fouled off. Threw it again. The Phillies have two players that have pitched, that have played in the World Series before. We've detailed Kyle Schwarber's story. David Robertson is the other. Better than 38 postseason games now. Including a trip to the World Series with the New York Yankees. Another 0-2 pitch. Ball off. He is not the closer for this team. This is just kind of where this journey has taken Rob Thompson in the bullpen. They will aggressively manage game. Robertson trying to get him to the finish line. The one two pitch. Alvarez fouls back another. And just the fact that he came back as quick as he did after a freakish injury and celebrating. I believe it's a home run, right? Yeah. And I know Rob Thompson was worried he would maybe get up to this point. If at all, he came back early for last Yeah, he's celebrating Bryce Harper's home run in the wild card line at St. Louis down in the bullpen. He injured his calf. I thought it was so bad that if he get to the World Series, maybe then. That's the whole thing. If he get to the World Series, the Phillies weren't talking like that until recent days. Don Alvarez starting the 10th, chasing one in the dirt. Robertson buries it and buries Alvarez for the first out of the 10th. Tight spin. Not picked up. There's the grip, that spike curveball. Right now, the Phillies pitching is like. Done a job on the Houston Astros. That's the tenth, right? Strike out. I believe. Good one to start the tenth. Now it's Bregman. Tying right at the plate. Bregman swings and misses. He's out in front. Aaron Nola tonight gave up five runs in four and a third. So the bullpen went to work very early. And the Phillies bullpen that in these recent years are falling short has kind of been. Historically bad a couple of times. It's the bullpen. Trying to get it done in game one. Five pitchers piecing it together after Nola. The 0 1 pitch. Ball off. Yeah, when you think about some of the ways that they shirt up their ball club, you look no farther than the bullpen. You lose games late in the regular season, it takes the soul out of your ball club. You lose a lot of those games you should have won. One and two, and then when you get the confidence that they have, and really with three or four guys that they it then becomes the advantage you feel like you have. You turn a weakness into an advantage. Now, the starters have been a big part of that because they've eaten up a lot of those innings to hide some of that. But when you get on a roll and you get some hot guys, that's how you can run the table in the postseason. Runs over five innings tonight, just four base runners in those five innings. Robertson deals one, two. Bregman off balance, will swing to deep left, swing to the left. Four! Extra bases for Bregman. Tying run in scoring position in the tenth as Bregman delivers a double. Well, it's been right field that's come into play for most of this game, but here's that short course that we talked about in left field. Looks like maybe just a fly ball, but no, that left field fence, miniature Fenway fence, comes into play. Schwarber gives us a great effort as this is just outside his reach. And now a runner scoring position for Tucker. 
course, another instance this postseason of uh, the game giving us the guy of the night, the moment again. Not two home runs already for Kyle Tucker. Yeah, you never uh, want to get into a guy, but there is a base open if this pitching sequence doesn't go the way Robertson wants. First one. A little way better. Because the time run is obviously at second. The winning run is at home. So that's what you're concerned with. And if, the, if this at bat gets away from a 2-0, 3-1 count, I, I wouldn't be surprised to have Rob Thompson just put the runner on and set up a double play for very well to come up behind him. Astros looking for their first run since the third inning. One pitch. Big rip. He's trying to end it. Know you're going to get one of these pitches, and sometimes you see it and your eyes get big and you go after it. Boy, did he go after it! Red minute second, the tying run. One going, bottom of the tenth. One one pitch. Tucker chops it foul, strike two. And I want to forgive him the firmer breaking ball here with two strikes. One, two, pitch. Tucker takes ball two. for the first time tonight. A home run from JT Realmuto to start the top of the ten. Brendan Gretner giving the Astros some life. In scoring position after his double. On a 2-2 pitch, Kyle Tucker swings and misses. Robertson gets him with a breaking ball, and the Astros are down to their last out. Say one team makes a run, the other team makes a run. You don't see the amount of runs literally like in the postseason where the Phillies have made their series of runs. It's for six straight. They did that a couple times already this postseason. And now uh Gurriel trying to beat the buzzer for the Astros. He's got two more hits tonight. He's come to life in this postseason, and he's got good numbers against David Robertson. 38-year-old veteran, Yuli Gurriel. Perfect pitch from Robertson. Strike one. And with the infield playing the way they are, they have to play him straight up. As you see this pitch on the outside part of the plate, Bregman's going to have to get as big a lead as he can with two outs to make sure he can score on a hard-hit single or a line drive. Nobody close to holding them on, really. Pretty close. Here's the 0-1. Outside, one ball, one strike. Here we has played in 80 postseason games. He's got eight postseason home runs, including three in the World Series. Tied on at second. Astros down to their last out. Two and one on Guerrero. DH spot is next. And Aletnis Diaz, if he gets there, will pitch it for Trey Mancini. Here's a 2 1. Takes ball three. I can't make the uh, beat me if I'm Robertson. Base open again. You never want to put the go ahead run on. But he's pitching him as if. He doesn't expand the zone. He wouldn't mind walking him to get to Diaz. He's just one for 14 this postseason. 
you could say that's what was going to give the Astros their first loss. Astros did not score after the third inning. The Phillies have the largest comeback for a National League team in the World Series since 1956. The Dodgers came back from down six to win. 